Yeah, we are live. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another great uh, episode of Historically Haunted Vodcast. In case you guys didn't know, um, with summer and everything going on, I've been traveling a lot, doing stuff. I'm going every other week now for now. I got my radio show every Friday on Paranormal King Radio Network at 8 p.m. It's audio only. But the podcast that I do visual, I'm going to go every other week for now, just to kind of mix it up a little bit and uh, give myself a break. But um, I got some cool guests today. I got some guests... Um, Long story short, I was on their show, if you guys have heard of the Apocalypse Project podcast, and it was a lot of fun, man. We talked everything from ghosts and traveling to wrestling and fucking, I think, weed and burgers and everything else. So I, I wanted to do the courtesy of bringing them back on. And it's basically, um, they have real names, but I'm going to use their podcast names, excuse me. We have Play B, Playboy, and then we have uh, Sir, I guess it would be Sir, I'm not sure what the S-E-R is for, but Rev, uh, <laughs> my friend uh, Rudy. And um, they're the host of the Ap Apocalypse uh, Project podcast. They both do it together. It's like a double, um, like a co-host thing. They've basically been friends since high school. Um, they've always been interested in topics that are considered a bit strange or weird. I mean, like fucking life, right? But after years of writing, recording, and producing rap music, era, 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 um, which can be found on Play B Productions YouTube channel. We're going to bring that up. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, B and Rev are uh, have now basically turn to podcasting. That's what they do more or less together, like a full-time thing. And there's no limit to the topics that are discussed in the podcast. I mean, Christ, they had me fucking on. So what does that tell you? Um, so from pulp culture to paranormal, to politics, to cultural issues, to wrestling, to music, to fucking dildos. So let's bring on these fucking cats because they're a wild group. And uh, I love these guys. Oh, they're a lot of fun. Yes. Wow, that was an intro. I love that. Dang. I'm going to have to record that and make that a sound bite. Man. <laughs> yes. I wanted to do the series, but I had to throw the dildos because everybody does. You know? Everybody yeah, does you know, at some we, point. It, com it comes up. You know, we've all been curious. It's like that one section, remember, at the uh, where you go rent the movies, the Hollywoods or oh, whatever, yeah. that, that little curtain place right there. We all walk by as kids trying to <laughs> peek in that motherfucker. Like, <laughs> Daddy, what's in there? Quiet. Go see the mom. I got to yeah. get my mask. Uh, yeah. Uh, the pro golf tour. Why can't I go in there? It's scary uh, movies. Yeah. <laughs> now we get it free on our phones. So yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh -huh. Wow. Trying to, okay. Trying to steal my neighbor's dad's Playboys, my uncle's Playboys, <laughs> and now I'm like fucking uh -huh. xnxx.com. You boy. Uh, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Crystal Hill, me. Crystal Hill says hi, Adam. But I'm sure she's saying hi to everybody. Hey. Hi, Crystal. <laughs> And Nicole Smart says, hey, Adam, what's up, guys? Nicole has a show, too, Real Haunted oh, Connections. Nice. Oh, oh, right on. Nice. She's a medium. She's in the Warren Legacy Foundation with me. She's a member as well out in California. Nice. So, man, what the fuck you guys been up to? It's oh, been man. a couple months. Yeah, it's been wild, man. I smashed my finger at work. Check that thing out. Look at that. Oh, uh, brutal. It's blood blistered already. Oh, uh, look, it's, all, it's all swole. You see that? Oh, shit. Like, I'm going to lose that. Well, not the <laughs> I'll tell you what, my wife's been loving this finger. I'm like, I bet. <laughs> Give me the rough one tonight, oh, Playboy. Give me the like, rough yeah. one. I'll make it bleed. Oh, yeah, it's probably ribbed out a little bit, too, so uh, probably a little bit bump there. Uh -huh. like, yeah, I was ripped for her pleasure. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> my bad. Sorry. No, man. I, it's historically haunted, but it's my fucking show. We can... <laughs> What the no, fuck you, ever, dude? I mean, you, yeah, I'm gonna tell you what. Like, like you were one of the the the, the, the funnest. Not that to say that we haven't had fun guests. Like I said, Father Kenny was an incredible show. We had a great time with him, also. But it was <laughs> just like I, we love the the banter. It's like you got a personality made yeah, for man, television. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know what's funny? i most times when I when I'm a guest on a podcast or when they're on my show, they go, "Man, I love your energy," and I'm like, "And I don't even do cocaine." <laughs> like, <laughs> I just <laughs> <a drug>. <laughs> I've been on your. But you feed off it like you guys yeah, are. Fucking you know, yeah. I've been over here doing coffee enemas and getting all ready for the show, and snorting. Well, where's the laugh track? Oh, Cue the yeah. laugh track. Uh, <laughs> well, here, here's the thing, though. So he was complaining about how warm it is in this in this studio right now, and yet he, we're over here. It's like a, what, almost 100 degrees, and we're sitting here drinking coffee. Hey, man. I gotta have coffee after work. I just got off of work, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, well, right. yeah. So we're in the, we're in Central California here, like just what about an hour hour south of Sacramento, something like that. And it it, it is it is yeah. Pretty warm. Right now it says it's 92, but you know what? This sad Sunday or Saturday Sunday is gonna be 109 It'll out be here, brother. I'm like, damn. So how how warm does it get in Maine in the summer? That's what I have to ask. Well, see now, and this this is this kind of brings me to my point because right now it's abnormally hot. And people go, well, come to Texas, come to Florida, California. But listen, and I get it. You guys are always hot. Maine traditionally oh, in the summer 
we hit about 80 to 85 tops. Right now, we've hit literally, <laughs> seriously. And that to us is like, Christ, because we that must be nice. But, but think about it this now. Come January, when y'all are at 40 going, we're yeah. at negative 20. <laughs> We're at negative 20. We're 60 degrees cooler uh, than you fuckers. Yeah. So when it gets hot like this, our Eskimo skin's like, what the fuck, 85? <laughs> you know oh, that makes sense. That hey, actually he, makes really he, good Here sense. in California, it's 85 in December. We're like. Well, that's what I'm saying. So right now, for four days straight, it's been 95. And last month was, dude, I, I don't know if you guys saw, I canceled three podcasts. I had heat exhaustion. Really? I had a, mi a mild heat stroke. I crawled oh, to my sorry. toilet here. I was throwing up. I had heat rash. I had blood blisters all over my body. I Ooh. took three COVID tests. I, and they put a cold blanket on me. To, like I fucking thought I was dying. I was wiping my will out. But it's my body because it's been 95, 96. That's like 10 degrees above the norm. And even that's like, fuck me. I like my autumn here in me. And I, I'm oh. out there. I do most of my exploring in the autumn and wintertime. Summer, I'm, this, I'm in the fucking thing like a... Uh, I'm sweating right now talking to you guys. Yeah, no, it's so, hot here too. I haven't had to get a fan on. I'm like, yo, I hope it don't. You can't hear the fan or the AC blowing. No, I know, right? <laughs> I got my fan on, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I wanted I wanted to talk about something too because you brought it up. It's like like a lot of people are really puzzled by my by my stage name, uh, Sir Rev, and a lot of people, what does that mean? You know, a lot of people think, oh, He's my it's servant. <laughs> well, they, well, Rev I, is your initials, R E V. I, oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, okay, got on I don't know. I, did I tell you that, or did you figure that out? Well, I figured R for Rudy, V for the Val <laughs> Valentino, and, yeah. and I figured that's probably your and I figured that's probably your middle initial. Which yes. I love. I love stage names anyway. I've always loved. I'm a wrestling, obviously wrestling fan and a music fan. You love, oh, yeah, that. yeah, of course. But but yeah, Sir Rev, and I'm like, I wonder if he means is it Servant Rev? Is it Sir like Australia, like a uh, your English Sir? Yeah. No, yeah, and, th and that's originally what Please it was. Say. It was originally like, you know, because, you know, coming from the hip hop world, you know, one of my one of the rappers I like, of course, you know, Sir Mix a lot growing up from that era and stuff like that. So I oh yeah, Sir. And I figured, yeah, my, my initials are pretty cool. That's kind of different, you know, Rev. Yeah. So I figured Sir Rev, but then after a while I, I, I switched it. So the S E R is short for servant. So it's servant Rudy Edward Valderrama. So uh, oh. So mainly because I saw it was like, okay, a lot of the rappers back in when we were growing up, it was like they were always like self-promoting, yeah. like talking about all the stuff. I was like, I don't want to, that's not me. Not, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so humble that I'm going to be, I'm going to admit to how humble I am. I like, <laughs> <laughs> well, look at his mouth. I'm like, yo. <laughs> oh, like, that's so cute. It's Jesus. My, cute, my cute little mousy mouse. Well, you see, no wonder why you never made it in rap. You're humble. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right? I'm too humble. I'm, I'm too humble. No, but it was just along those lines. It was just a subversion. You know, it's like, okay, but so because I was more geared to like, I wasn't, we weren't, I, I personally wasn't like one of those gangster rap kind of guys. I was more along the lines of just pure hip hop, just like writing just, just stories and narratives, not like talking about, you know, guns and drugs and women. It was more along the lines of just writing my own feelings. I guess in the same vein now, it's popularized, like, I guess it's called emo rap now. You know, you got, <laughs> you got guys like what, what, what Mac Miller oh, and like even NF. Rap. You know, so it's kind of oh, like NF's tight. And uh, so it's kind of like along those same veins. It's just like that, that, yeah. kind of, that kind of style. Yeah. But that, that, so that's, I gravitated more towards that even back then. I wasn't really into like the self promoting kind of rap stuff. You guys were both kind of into the same shit. I think you both listen to Naughty by Nature or whatever back in oh, the day. Oh, heck right? yeah. There's yeah. nothing. We actually did a podcast, not the, a couple actually. Uh, I guess our favorite would be. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, what? I was like, oh, <laughs> that'd be funny. If everything cool. I, wanted I, wanted to clean, I wanted to clean my camera. I'm like, how do I do this? I look like I'm eating them. Hey, if we could have. <laughs> Sorry, gotta... it was a little foggy and I wanted to clean it. We should have put some fish strings on our headphones so when he did that, it all. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been badass. Oh, that was fun. No, See, but... on, the, on the historically haunted show, you will get blown once in a while. You know? Uh, <laughs> you Oh, we're coming back. Yeah, I got oh. I was going to be on the mic and get blown in. <laughs> Thanks for back to the oh, day. Man. Uh, 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 Heather says, uh, my girl Heather says, hi, Heather Kimonini. She thinks, should I go Playboy's coming on? She goes, who? I go, Play B. She goes, oh, the podcast guy. The podcast. <laughs> so she nice. says, I don't think you currently have an Apocalypse Project uh, uh, podcast shirt. That's odd. Wink, wink. Oh, my God. Oh. Hey, you can scan it, too, if you got Spotify. Check that out. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love one extra large, please. I got oh, you, yeah, brother. Wait, we don't for sure, but I do want to hook you guys up with some merch, man. Yeah, we, 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 we've been meaning to send something out to all the guests, all the fabulous guests we've had. We just we just can't figure out what to put on there. I was thinking, I don't know if anybody wants to chime in with an idea, but I was going to say, I survived the apocalypse, you know what I mean? And then oh. if you the podcast or something, I don't know, just something yeah. we're throwing around some ideas, but once we iron it all out, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love you guys are fucking. You're funny, but you're initial. You're, you're like, 
you just you yeah you guys get something man that i think because i mean obviously i've been on a couple podcasts and you see that i mean uh, at first i thought wow a podcast now literally everybody and their brother's got a podcast right? yeah so you look at the ones and some of them i go uh and then the guy i'm like eh, and just you guys you're you're funny you're you're offbeat and i'm just gonna kiss your ass here but you're fucking <laughs> i'm glad you came on man seriously well, hey, man, we're happy to be here man yeah. Shoot. so 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 hip hop, man, growing up on hip hop, I love that shit because I myself was very much into George Clinton and P Funk, oh yeah, Ice Cube, NWA. Right. Um, what what do, you, what do you guys like for nowadays stuff? You guys like Deantwood? Oh, Deantwood, yeah. Uh, you familiar with them? No. So oh, play I'm gonna, come I'm on, have to pull it up. Well, for him. maybe if play I, something. So no, they're from what South Africa, right? They're Big Town, South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah, and they're uh, they're very interesting. Good. Uh, they're it uh, unapologetic, I would say. Oh, the nice. Least. <laughs> I like that. Um, their style is. Uh, uh, you want to talk about poppy? I wouldn't say offensive, but I, I guess it's kind of like they just have. Yeah, I guess. I guess they would be considered offensive. But at the same hey, time, but I nowadays, what point. isn't offensive? Like, man, you can't, you can't stub your toe and there's some protest about <laughs> no, it. <you're... laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, oh, can I even say protest? Is that oh, gonna... why wasn't there a sign here oh. saying there's a sidewalk? I can't see because I'm looking at my phone when I walk. <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, but yeah. I, I, I'm familiar with. I, I'm not. I, I'm not a huge fan of theirs, but I am familiar with them. I, see, the thing with me when it comes to music, I, I don't hate on a style necessarily just because I don't like it. There are some people that I, I that I just naturally just don't like because I just don't like their style. I don't like the just the the, the just how they do their music. Yeah. And I think one of them, for instance, why I, I probably get a lot of hate for is I do not like Jay Z. Jay Z is one of the mm. rappers that, that I just will not listen to. Uh, and I, I for a lot of different. Yeah, for you them. ready, B? I, I just, yeah, I just. I thought like that was song. our song. No, whatever. <laughs> you ready, B? I'm like, yo. Well, you know what it was. It, you know, here's what it was. It was because when him and Beyonce redid uh, "Me and My Girlfriend," you don't talk bad about. I, me. I put that personally as a huge Tupac fan. That I, 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 I took, I considered Tupac. that disrespectful. Really? So that's what. That's why. Yeah, and that's the best part is that's your opinion. Like some people look at me like, oh, you don't like that movie? You don't like that band? You don't like that food? I'm like, yeah, it's called my personal fucking opinion. Suck it. Like, what do you yeah, want right? me to say, man? I like fucking pineapple on pizza. Eat my shit. You don't like it? Don't yeah. order it. Yeah, that's, yeah but, that sounds like a you problem. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, like I'm in the metal and people go, oh, you don't like Five Finger Death Punch? I go, nah, the lyrics are cheesy. The guy's cheesy. Everybody likes him. Oh, yeah, you don't really like metal then. I go, oh, why? Is there a badge? Am I going to lose a badge of metal badge? Or, like, <laughs> I'm going to say that. You I've been on that website. It's not like a porn site. I'm like five metal finger band. I'm like, yo, the chicks never came. That's weird. <laughs> I was there for 30 minutes watching it. Like typical metal guys. They finish up before the girls finish and then they yeah, right? <laughs> well, you know, you know what the interesting thing is too about like right now I listen to almost everything. And this is what we talked about before. It's just like the the, the change in, in in taste as you get older. Like growing up, yeah, there was, there was only, I'm starting to sound like my mom. Now. There, there, there's only specific. Like we, I only like listening to hip hop. Like we, when you're out here and you listen to like the hip hop stations, it's like I only like listening to the hip hop. Like if an R&B thing came on or something like that, I was just like, I wish I would just skip this or you change the yeah. channel. But now I find myself <laughs> like, I even like music from the '80s. You that, know what, bro? That I like pop that. music from the '80s. I'm like, I would have never have listened to this growing up. I find I myself, like I find myself honestly, no, no shame in the game. I find myself listening to classical like music sometimes too. You know, I'd be Dude, meditating to some Mozart. You, we would have shit, never you know have done that in our in our. Oh hell years. Nah. <laughs> no! No, because yeah, we thought we was all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we're well, all that's just it. Peer pressure. You're around yeah. your boys, and you're gonna show up with a fucking Jeff like, Leopard shirt on. Who the fuck with a fag? But but when you get older and you kind of find your own post, like right now, I got. Honestly, I literally have like one friend. Everybody else is dead or they just don't hang out with me. So I got one friend and we just whatever. We'll put on Motorhead and then we'll put on, um, you know, uh, Cypress Hill and then whatever. I mean, I'm open. To, I like Steve Miller Band now. As a kid growing up, I thought it was cheesy. Now I'm like, all right. Yeah. I, mean, I think tastes grow like food. And I think the less you care what people think, the more you can experience it. Well, that's the it. thing. You know, yeah. we're starting to shed those labels, you know. It don't, yeah. it don't, you know, we don't, we're not conforming to the norm, you know. Well, what yeah, saying? it's in, well, it's interesting and, that, that how much that actually affects damn, you growing up. To hit Got to hit record. It's, it's okay. I, got, I got record. Yeah. It was fine. No, but the one thing I was going to say was like, it's interesting, like how much that actually affects your outlook. But I think, you know what? A big part of it, I think, is because you always look at your parents, whatever your parents tend to listen to or what they grew up on, you see as uncool. 
Well, but see, that's the thing. My parents listened to rap and hip hop growing up. Well, no, I grew no, up no, with the no, Beastie no, no, Boys, yeah. the Fat Boys, yeah, and well, all true. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I get that. Same thing about with me. You had cool parents, Playboy. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Yeah, man. they named him Playboy. That's yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how cool they are. It's on my birth certificate. <laughs> Yo, this kid's gonna be pimp. <laughs> yeah, it says. You know where it says on birth certificate, father's name? It just says Playboy. I'm like, huh. yeah, I love Playboy. it. Yeah. Well, I guess- <laughs> well, you, that was the inspiration for you. Who fucking? Yeah. Well, well, like, like right. so. What, what I wanted to touch on too, though, talking about music in uh, different genres. For instance, like a lot of people, like for instance, you'll hear like, oh, all country sounds the same, or all hip hop sounds the same, or all metal sounds the same. But it really takes somebody who is actually doing it, or has actually listened to the different yeah. genres, or not, because there's, there's genres within genres, and that's what I, I don't like. Even within country music, you can see progressions too. Uh, well, country nowadays is starting to sound like pop. Oh, yeah, but country now is like rock pop kind of thing. But you know, like like yeah, that's the whole. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to kind of touch on that is like when you're in music production and you listen to other people's stuff, you can tell when they're being lazy, and that to me is what pisses me off. Like you hear rap nowadays, a lot of it. I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of that mainstream rap nowadays. I'm like, yo, I was writing better lyrics than that in the third grade, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how is this even popular right now? I mean, even even a lot of the beats are off beat. I'm like, how you mess up? Beat? Like, y'all don't know how to count music. You don't know how to count beats. Like, yo, those those little nuances right there is what really gets under my skin because it's like, yo, I when we were doing music, we put our heart and soul into it. Yeah. We're lyricists, you know. We, we're making sure that the lyrics were tight, everything made sense, everything, you know. Yeah. And and then it didn't get nowhere because people weren't ready for that. It was too much thinking for them, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what well, people you know, want because well, yeah. it's a genre, and that's the one thing because you never want to be that guy. And I've turned in. For instance, so like when it comes to like the mumble rap thing, that's one another. That's a genre oh, that I, I just cannot get into. Like the little yachty oh, and uh, the Takashi Six Nine. Like it, it just seems inflated and just the 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 flavor of the month kind of thing. Which it actually has turned out to be because it's kind of like it's just diminish, diminishing. You know, yeah. okay, like you don't hear that much about them anymore. And for thank, thank goodness. But, but Skank, like, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I just feel like they're not even trying. They're literally it's like, like let the kids buy this. Blah, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah. I feel like saying is like, yo, get a thesaurus and a dictionary. <laughs> that's what we had as tools growing up. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know what these words meant, but we had to learn and, and uh, you know, update that's our real rap. Yeah, you when you're from the hood, you don't get the quite. Yeah. Uh, the, you know what I'm saying? So, so we be with our dollar stores, thesaurus and shit. Like, what rhymes <laughs> with this? And what does that mean? And when we're looking things up in the dictionary, and then we just still don't know what it means. So we're in the children's dictionary. Like, yo, yeah. you know what but, I mean? Like, but when it comes down to it, yeah, I think that there's a <laughs> to, to pure hip hop. That and that's what's what's sad is when you for purists that really understand the the point of hip hop, the history, the culture. Yeah. And things along those lines, or even just put an effort, man. Well, it, but but then to hear what's actually popular. But when you go back in time, it was the same thing. Yeah. The, uh, when when you look at what was even popular back in our time, the purists were even back then mm. not on the forefront. Mm. It was whatever was was popular in the flavor of the month. Occasionally, you get the the exceptions like the notorious Bigs and the Tupacs and you know Wu Tang, which is which I see is one of those pure pure groups that actually made it to a, to yeah. a cultural relevance but yeah. i think nowadays you get people like hobson for instance a lot of these underground yeah. uh, rappers uh tech nine is a good example i of- love tech nine he's deep i like tech nine. Oh, yeah. tech yes. nine tech nine is good i like music that's gonna make you think you know and, and or even even some like I, I listen to a lot of lyricists and i'm like yo what the fuck did that word mean so then i go look and i like that though you that know teaches I mean? you it's almost, like you said earlier about the source you're almost teaching yourself yeah, uh, information. you're learning by rapping. You so you're you're doing an art at the same time, but you're learning too. It's fucking cool. I love and it. Yeah, I believe I'm big in lyrics, man. I want yeah, to exactly. be, yeah. Some shit that's dumbed down. I guess some stuff is okay, but then you got like, what does the fox say? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that asshole made money off that garbage. But a lot you of people are so small minded. They just like a catchy beat and dumb words. Uh, yeah, well, you know, like, like I find it funny. Like you hear all these. Uh, my son's 19, so he listens to all that new age rap stuff and it's funny because you're all oh, bitch dad i'm fucking these bitches this i'm like well you were a virgin till two weeks ago what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> you know what i mean you ain't you ain't fucking nothing bro you know what i mean we you know that's how it was when we all started we were like two dead fish we think we're doing something you know what i mean and like bro <laughs> you just started fucking bitches relax you know what i'm saying I know. Yeah, yeah that gets them quick and it's yeah 
And to touch on this real quick too, and I know this isn't, a, we're not doing a whole rap episode, everyone. We're just kind of talking. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, but I want to touch on Tupac because honestly, that's one of my favorites. That motherfucker wrote a story. He sure did say bitches and guns and all that shit. Yeah. But every song was story. He literally was a yeah. rose out of the concrete. That motherfucker right, was a sure. story. Well, Tupac, well, what is this one for Tupac? Yeah, well, one of the yeah. really quick, like, yeah, just just to, to, to piggyback on that. The and Nas one. wrote his balls, Nas and fucking Nelly and. Uh, yeah, all of them. And, and the, the thing is that they, when you look at Tupac, he was more than just an, an artist. Uh, I mean, I put it that way. He was he was an artist to the extreme sense of the word. You know, uh, you got to remember, he went to Juilliard's. He, he studied with uh, and, and did performance arts at Juilliard's, the premier Ooh, that. acting school in New York. He, he That's how he knew Jada Pinkett Smith. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was because they were at Juilliard's together in acting classes. And they did, that's where he did his Whoa. formidable formidable training and not just that like, his, i'm gonna bring in an instrumental his, his mom uh uh afini shakur was was a member uh of the black panther so he had a lot of cultural political leanings so when you look at Pac, he wasn't just a a rapper he was an activist he was an actor he was an artist he was so many different things and uh, not just that when you sit and actually listen to him though i don't agree with everything he said and all of his enunciations but when you actually sit there was a heart behind that man that there hasn't been in the rap game uh before or since and i think people are just scared that's and i think funny. that's one of the reasons why he didn't last because his heart grew too big for this world and he I, he ended up saying things that probably he shouldn't have said if you believe the conspiracy series as well oh, true man. i don't still that's a whole nother topic the whole yeah. <laughs> death. i'm especially now that's coming into my world unsolved murders mysteries yeah. and shit. Yeah. people some say he's still alive like elvis like tupac and elvis are in canada having cheese sandwiches come well, on i heard cuba so Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had a show on that. Y'all want to check that out? We're gonna yeah. do a part two. We're on gonna that. we're gonna keep investigating because that, that's a big thing. But anyways, we don't want to uh, take too well, much. Well, of and a... real, real quick, I'm glad you said that because people are tuning in. Uh, where can people find your shit? YouTube, Facebook. Go ahead and give us a quick show. Yeah, so you can find it you're definitely on YouTube, uh, the Apocalypse Project Podcast, yeah. Facebook, the Apocalypse Project Podcast. You can find us on all the audio podcasts: yeah, Apple, Google, Spotify, Spotify, Spreaker. Ask Ask Alexa. To play the the Apocalypse Project podcast, she'll do it. Google do I the think, same thing. Yeah, I think that you're gonna set your. The, I know. I should set up. <laughs> you're gonna set. Yeah, up but you the know studio. the way we do it, man. You know we 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 have uh <laughs> like we have this. the the audio. Oh, and- oh Alexa, Alexa. Oh, whoops. Oh yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, you can yeah, find so us. So if, if you're if you're driving and you want to hear audio, just check us out on any streaming platform. If you want to watch us, you can watch us on any. Uh, See our streaming. beautiful faces. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. They were a lot of fun. Like I said, I was on their show, and we did uh, a little extra half-hour wrestling show. I actually did two shows for them in one, which is pretty neat. I don't know if everybody else does that. I think I might be a first on that. But Yeah, no, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, um, that, that, that's how we do it. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it was good because we, we kind of – we did the ghost haunted shit, and then we did the – Oh, wrestling thing. But real quick, I want to do something because I love being interactive with my friends in chat here. Yeah. Uh, so Nicole asked a question. I'm going to ask you guys, what's your go-to for movies? She says, are you Star Wars fans? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, we're from Modesto, asked. baby. We're from Modesto. Modesto, George Modesto Lucas. California. That's how we do George it. Luke. That's where she lives. She lives by the Queen Mary in the Winchester house. She lives in Southern California, but Nicole does. Oh, oh nice. nice. Alcatraz, she's been there, and Queen Mary and shit. So, nice. So, so you guys, are you guys... What are going to do? Okay, if, if there is anybody that's in the stream right now that is actually in California that's close to... Uh, uh, we, that stuff, yeah. we would love to kind of like not piggyback, but like <coughs> do some collab collaborations, but also because we haven't yet been on an investigation or did something more in depth. We were actually before uh, Dr. Heather Lee. I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Heather Lee. That's my uh, girl. Warren Legacy. Yeah. 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 So uh, when she was in Vegas, because I frequent Vegas a lot because I got family out there. So before I'm she too broke to go to be- Vegas, before she moved <laughs> from uh before she moved from Vegas to Florida, where she's at now, she invited us actually to go to some of her talks and investigations <laughs> that she was doing at the, the the gold mines out there. Oh yeah, and the right West Towns, we yes. Yeah, why? Right when we were about to go, I caught COVID, so I could we couldn't go. So we Fuck. we're still we're still <laughs> yeah. looking on being able to uh, to work with somebody and actually go do something like that. So. But Hoping. then eventually we want to spread our legs, man. We'll be out there with you. Oh, look, Heather. Oh, oh, Heather. Oh, yeah. We're, oh, we're, Wednesday we're, night at 10 o'clock on Real Haunted oh, Connections. Dr. Heather, nice. oh, that, that's our, that's our oh, eyes. Tune uh, in. Paranormal King, Paranormal King Radio Network. Yeah. You can Google yeah. It, those plays. I'll have to give you guys on there on my radio show. It's audio only. So it's not as fun as this, but it's more in depth because people just yeah. hear you. I think it's yeah. a little bit more. You yeah. Could, you, you, could yeah. Use, you could use your sexy a- voice. NPR voice. Oh, yeah. You have so, um, 
<laughs> Shit, man. You, yeah, you guys come up to New England. You know I'll hook you up. I mean, I've literally <laughs> been to so many Stephen King sites. So you guys know. You, you no, like I know. Yeah, we follow you. I mean, that's one no, thing I, I know. Like, I'm, I'm envious, bro. I'm like trying to live through you. I'm like, yo. Uh, you know, well, honestly, you wake up every day. I'm like, where are we going today? I don't know. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> that means a lot because, dude, not to turn this around on me because it's, it's your show, not mine, so to speak. But I, I in the beginning, dude, when I first started this shit, I had people up my ass telling me it was great, this and that. And lately, dude, it's like literally – I don't know what it is. I mean, Heather's like, you think too much. I go, no, I just literally, I I see who likes my shit and I pay attention. And then right. I see who doesn't like my shit and I see them posting and I'm like, why is my stuff not good enough? Sounds right. cheesy, but these are the same ones that patted me on the back for eight months telling me it was great. So then I'm like, are they stealing my shit? Are they jealous oh, of my yeah, shit? Yeah, no shit. Because not all of it's trademarked. And honestly, dude, a lot of places I go, I either find them by chance or I do a lot of research. And why does some fucking asshole go where I fucking research for a month? You yeah, yeah. Well, and and that and that's the interesting thing, though. It's like, the, and here, that's probably getting off topic. But one of the things that you learn is just like the world is beginning be, is beginning to become smaller and smaller because, and the internet is is rapidly increasing that aspect because mm. all somebody has to do is post something of something that nobody's really ever been to or very yeah, few right. people know about, and then all of a sudden everybody and their mom is going to be there and doing the exact yeah. Then you got thing. some ten year old YouTube genius going to make like a million dollars off of something like ah, yeah. damn it <laughs> yeah yeah. You look down and it's like hey guys TikTok video guess where I am I'm like cocksucker I was there Ew. last week no one's ever heard of it now this asshole's there yeah and you couldn't even like my post it's like sharing my meme without liking it you bastard uh huh <laughs> and, yeah, and then they're the ones getting the credit for it they're like <laughs> yeah I love my YouTube channel I have a hundred 23 subscribers but i have 211 friends so i know not everybody subscribed which is fine um that's why i don't have a lot of friends because if you literally go like three months without liking my shit d friend i know that sounds cheesy but (laughs) (laughs) okay so that's an interesting topic too because it's like i do that regularly i do a a spring cleaning when it comes to my friends list because i i'm kind of like on on facebook and social media i don't want to become that person that just collects friends for the sake of having a, oh, man. the numbers because it's like if, if there's people that i'm not engaging with i'm like why are you here yeah on, you know but when it comes to the social media stuff like when it comes to the podcasting stuff that's different but when it comes to a personal like aspect a per- it's like yeah. i i'm, I'm I, I act as a gatekeeper on on who i let in yeah. because i notice that too many people not I don't want to okay I don't want to sound derog- like mean in that way but I just feel like you have to keep things that are precious precious you have to have precious. some things that are that are that that you know that that are how, how should I say it? like are you going to invite are you going to invite these people in to see your photo album in yeah. your collection in your living room probably not then why are they going to be on Facebook looking at you <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 like, that's a good way yeah. of putting it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's real oh yeah I, I, I completely agree with that that's because then the next thing you know they're superimposing your picture saying to their friends well, look at this fucking schmuck thinks he's hot shit I've seen people <laughs> do it to other people I've seen people friends do that to other people under the mud I'm like what are they fucking doing to me then yeah well, I look at a goofy oh, face yeah. at a tombstone going hey, people, you know, people, people who drawing a dick in my mouth or something <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be vulnerable here for a second because I had to, I went, you know, I, I went through a, went through a divorce. And when you go through a divorce, a lot oh. of things start stirring up. And I remember one of the things that I had to deal with is really, uh, really understanding that uh, one of the one of the things that came to the end of that was I realized I had a really um, uh, uh, what they call an addiction to affirmation. And social media could be what a lot of people get a lot of affirmation. It's like you feel your phone ring or you see that little red dot and then you're just like, oh, OK. Then, uh, then, then you kind of it's you seek after it like a drug, and I realize that it doesn't really matter who likes your stuff, who doesn't like your stuff, who agrees with you, who doesn't dis- whatever. Because in reality, today you have to be okay with yourself, and as long as that's Amen. as long as that's the primary thing, then you can go forward. Because then your 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 joy and your happiness and your contentment isn't hinged on somebody else; it's only found within. So I had to really learn how to do that. I went through therapy. I went through a lot of stuff just to realize wow. some of those simple things. And, I've, and I'm better off for it. So then when I go to social media, I'm just like, I don't need this many people um, here if they're not engaging because they have right. to add value. Right. If, you, if, you, if you value yourself, you're going to allow things in that, that are going to increase your value, not diminish your value. Yeah. Fucking a Playboy, you must agree, right? I mean, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Shit, no, oh, he's valuable. Yeah, well, I mean, you, got, you guys have been friends since high school, so I'm sure you yeah. guys rap a lot about shit. Oh, and yeah. honestly, that hits home because I, I honestly, um, when I first started the radio show, probably about halfway into it, I was like, well, this guy didn't tune in, and this guy shared it, but he didn't like it, and this guy, oh, and this guy's all my show, and I, and, I, and Heather's like, 
you're not having fun. You do this to have fun. You're critiquing yourself. Yeah, you're beating right. yourself up. And I'm literally, and these people live in your head. They live rent free. And half the time, they don't even fucking know it. And for all you know, they didn't even see your post. So yeah. I think it, Damn, that's I'm something okay. I think that social media puts on us where if yeah. you don't get that, if someone liked you but didn't give you a heart emoji, they don't really care. Like, who gives <laughs> a rat's ass? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's what set us apart in our music as well because we had that same approach when we record stuff. Like, yo, we were recording music that we want to listen to. And if yeah. everybody else wanted to get on the journey, cool. And if not, yeah. hey, that's your loss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're yeah. Listening. I'm not, I'm my own biggest fan. Like I'll be in the car bumping my own shit. Like, uh, like, yes. you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, what's interesting though, when, 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 we, when we first record, so the last time we actually recorded something and before something has been about 10 years. Yeah, and, really? Um, it's been a long time. Damn. So I, I remember at first, even when I would do art, cause I, I, I do like to draw. I, I have other things that I like to do on the art side, but when I initially do it, I don't like it. And then when I revisit it, I'm like, oh, this actually was Get that fire going. Yeah, it's like, oh, actually, I wasn't too bad, actually. I, we're, I'm a, too much of a self critic, you know, in, in the initial. Uh, but when I listen to our songs now that we did 10 years ago, and I'm just like, yeah, that was actually really good. You know, we have, <laughs> yeah, so, but I anyway, mean, every, I, don't know and everything. The, I don't know if you feel the same way because you also are a musician. You, yeah. You've you performed live. I don't know if you've recorded I've, anything. I, I've crumpled songs up, thrown them in the trash, and then pulled them out later and ironed <laughs> them out and go, okay, fucking almost like I guess writing a book. But the thing is, uh, um, Rev, I'll call you Rev. Just that, That's um, fine. Uh, I'll say Rudy, but Rev. Yeah, it's, um, either or, <laughs> it's fine. You, you, if you're not your own biggest critic, then why the fuck are you in it? If you're wrestling and you don't think you have the goods to be the champion why the fuck are you wearing tights if you know yeah, if you you're anything man I, I don't i don't want to say that i'm better than people but i strive to be the best when tom dick and harry go to the fucking lizzie borden house that 900 people a year fucking a month go to which is lovely i've been there i pride myself on going to the little fucking epcot uh, pear i just went to the Epcot pear tree all right 1623 this dude fucking planted it massachusetts first governor ever and uh it's been yeah, there since 19 yes yeah, 1623 it's a pear tree i don't know fucking anybody on my friends list that's gone maybe there is something that I've, okay. I've never seen it wait a minute so i and, yeah. I, and I was sitting there thinking Would you I was eat like the fruit off of that thing? well i was sitting there like how the hell does he find this i'm like that is so interesting i know and yeah, i'm like right. how do you find the first tree that was obscure <laughs> brother okay <laughs> I can't even find my way to the grocery store half the yeah, fucking right? time. Well, I'm like, yo. Yeah, I, like, oh my God. I tell I'm you, um, Atlas Obscura, eight, uh, Atlas, like Atlas Obscura, it tells you everything. It's free website, and it tells you everything from the, the maybe, dude, you just shit in every town. It tells you where the biggest ball of yarn is, where uh, Charles Manson killed somebody, where a vampire is buried, where there's a house made out of tombstones. I mean, I've been to so much shit. Oh, that's cool. Atlas, I try to name drop them so they can sponsor my ass because I try to I turn so many people on to them. I think yeah. you guys would like it. I seriously no, would. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I have to... in, I'm like, what's near me? Because I went to Danvers for that uh, conference. I gotta I gotta show you guys. You guys saw it probably, but Jason Voorhees, the first one. Oh, oh no, yeah, 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 yeah. I seen you uh -huh. posted that. Yeah. And then I got the new Texas. I know it's a glare. That's a new Texas chainsaw from the new Halloween Kills. He's killing Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh. Yeah. I got uh, oh pet cemetery to Adam. I want to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's oh, not there. That's original Mike Myers from the first yeah. one. I love that, dude. Pinhead so, Hellraiser. Oh yeah, I seen that one. I see yeah, Adam. I see. No tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. I love that part. Uh, and then uh, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. So Sick. so you were just at a, a, a it would be like a horror convention, right? Yeah, it was put on by the group Ice Nine Ice Nine Kills. It's like a, a a screamo emo metal band that sing about horror movies. I'm not a big fan, but uh, I'll pay forty bucks to go meet Kane Hodder and all my childhood yeah. heroes and shit. Oh, no, no, and that's interesting. Like, so this is a plug for our last show actually, because we just uh, spoke Ooh. with Dr. Heather Lee, who actually and Chris McKinnell. We didn't speak. Phantasm. To yeah, they were at Phantasm yeah. down in Orlando. And we had a chance to actually catch up with her while she was at the convention. It was pretty cool. Yeah, we, we, we saw Krampus. We saw Krampus. <laughs> oh, Krampus. Yeah, yeah. So it, was, well, it was really cool because it's like I, I, I like I talked before. It's like I'm very familiar with the the, uh, the comic book convention circuit. I've been to a few of them. I think they're really cool and awesome. But one of the greatest things that I like going for those those conventions for, of course, is to look around and buy spend your money, basically. But it's also to like see the cosplay. Like the, oh, the, the pervert. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
He likes yeah. the girls with the elf ears and the little oh, yeah. 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 right? The anime imitations, Damn. yeah, <laughs> with the big eyes. And shit. <laughs> no, but really? hey, can I, we take an intermission? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. No, I, do, I, do, I do agree. There's a guy dressed around in a big predator outfit. Yeah, he had a oh, gun yeah. on his shoulder, and every time he turned, the gun would go and put a red dot. I couldn't yeah. get a picture of him, but fuck. No, the, the creativity That's of badass. all that, I thought that was really yeah. cool. So it's like, I lo- anytime I, my sister actually is a, a works at a comic book store here in, in town. And uh, she's always telling me when the next thing is. And in fact, I was telling her, actually, yeah, we talked to Dr. Heather Lee about the uh, convention that she went to. So like, oh, those are all over the place. And they have them here. She's like, yeah, we're going to go to one. I'm like, I'm going to. <laughs> oh, I love it. Heather says she wants a WWE meet and greet. Those are fun. But yeah, those are fun. I mean, you guys could even, I mean, obviously it's for the bigger people, I figure. But people like us could even, oh, look what that? you made me. Look what you made me do. I had to, I had to download it. Is that the oh, one? Oh, Alice Obscura, that a boy. It's free on Google. Yeah, I just I downloaded it. Uh-huh. I didn't even know there was an app. No shit. I just put. Oh, look, there's just... one for low. Shit, they do listen to me. Look, home workout, fasting. <laughs> Fuck. I don't I guess... know. I don't download nothing, Playboy. I just go to on this Google. I don't download nothing. Oh, okay. But well, it, shit. It, now it I got a virus. You, <laughs> it, it tells you like weird food, like maybe like a certain bologna sandwich or a certain ice cream that's made it like walnut pie or something it's like oh, oh but if you if you look near me when i was in danvers it, it showed me the edcott pear tree which i've seen before because i go through all of new england all the time i've been in most of maine and uh i said That's wow the cool. oldest fruit the oldest fruit tree and it still bears fruit that people put in cobbler it's got a big iron uh, gate uh, around it. it's in the back of a parking lot no a little tiny sign no one was there and uh, it's not haunted but it's historic and it's fucking one of a kind yeah, yeah. I, I i like history i actually like looking at old buildings and old um you yeah. know architecture yeah. and stuff i love that like we'll go somewhere and i'm just looking everybody's like oh look at this look at that i'm just looking at the old buildings and shit like oh this is badass just think You're about me how- man architecture yeah. and shit oh, bro like, just think about how many people touched this wall or walked through this gateway or you know what i mean that's just who where died my- in this building who, yeah, who maybe gave did. birth in the 1800s when people gave birth yeah. in their houses they, oh, they didn't dude, have hospitals <laughs> Over the we over this last weekend, we stayed at the De Anza in San Jose off of Santa Clara Street, right? Where it's like an old hotel. They remodeled the inside, but they left the outside all. It looks like fucking some weird ass, scary fucking haunted motherfucking. Oh. I told my wife, I go, man, and I go, so we were laying in bed. I'm like, just like trying to see if I hear anything. And shit. Like, <laughs> oh, you spent the night. That's fucking. Yeah, we, we stayed the night. We went to a freestyle concert, so we stayed down. You know, it was oh. like a couple blocks away from from where the San Jose Sharks play. So I was like, yo, oh. and uh, but you know we're. I was trying to stay away, but we're hammered, so I didn't hear shit. <laughs> ah, so was like, <laughs> I'm drunk. Yeah, yeah, that's one way to cure it. Uh, yeah, I'm like, oh, you I want hear something? It's your stomach growling, playboy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Well, no, so it's interesting. I'm pissing well, in the closet. Hey. <laughs> no, so what's interesting is there is like this little cowboy town that's not that far from us, up in the foothills. Oh, uh, Columbia. Uh, Columbia. And uh, they tight. one of the one of the greatest things is they have this old schoolhouse from like the 1800s that's up there that they they that they they. they Set up that you can't actually go in, but you can walk in. You can see how it was all and set you, up. They have it all set up the oh. way it was back then. No, and what's cool is people that live because this town has never shut down since its founding. It's yeah, still an it's operating still, town, and there's they just have the old section. But when pe- the people that live there have to dress in period of clothing, right? yeah, yeah. So I, I was telling my wife, and every, every time someone comes to visit, we'll take them there just because it's fun. And I'm like, look at all these people dressing in period clothing, but how do we know? We didn't pass by a ghost at one point. One of them was, you know what I mean? An actual, you know what I mean? Because they're dressed like from the 17, 18, or like the 18, you know, yeah. 90s or whatever. There's and it's a man like, that thinks, and it is like the ghost is like, holy fuck, my people, what's going on? Let's go to the uh, moon. Hello, they're like, hello. Uh, they're like, what the fuck's a podcast? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so it's, it's historical reenactment all the time there. That's yeah, well, 24 wild. hours a day, bro. Yeah, 24 no, it's hours really a day. Cool. But the one thing that they have up there that's within walking distance, like I think it's only like a couple hundred or maybe a hundred yards from the school is an act, the, the original cemetery. And oh. we, I love going there because I find that 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 form of history. That's the really only place I haven't gone yet. It's that fine that really like going and looking at the 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 names and the dates on there. I just find that fascinating yeah incredibly fascinating not not in a morbid sense but i think it's kind of like a way of like because i really do love history like oh, some I of the it. some of the greatest books of my favorite books i've ever read you know besides the bible would be the uh would be history oh. books and uh when it came to to going to these places i just just an envelop with the history just thinking about how it would have been to live in these areas at those times dude and, it's a type actually dude, i have a video it's all about oh. putting yourself there and people see it and go, what? It's just a bridge or it's just a road. But think about if the two yeah. horse clapping. Think about, right. think about yeah. that shit. You well, know? Really, okay, well, really quick, though. Like the, One of the interesting things, there's a little town on their way up to that other town called Knights Ferry. Uh-huh. It's like a, they only have, like a, I think, a population of 100 or so. 
But wow. in, the, in that little town, they have the longest wooden covered bridge this side of the Mississippi. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's little things like that. Oh, it's just so cool. cool, man. But if you want to check out Columbia on my on my personal YouTube channel called yeah. Play.B, there's a video called Trip to Columbia. I took my cousin there for the first time. So that's my YouTube wow. stuff. And then there's Play that B. video. Yeah, Play.B, man. Check it out. And then you can see that video. And you could kind of get a, a feel for what it's like there. It's so badass. It's one of my favorite places to go to. Well, well, that actually brings me to a question that Nicole asked twice. I want to get to Nicole Gaspar. She asked what you guys most like haunted place you've been or the place you guys have had the biggest experience. You said it a long time ago. Sorry, Nicole. Um, you guys can either go which one first, but what's like your biggest experience or maybe most historic haunted place you've been? Uh, I don't know how historic this would be, but the, the most haunted place me personally that I've been in was a house I lived well, an apartment I lived in Gilroy when I was growing up. Uh, we we would always hear creaking up the stairs, all that normal kind of stuff, you know, but not creaking. You would hear normal. footsteps. Yeah, right. Well, for us growing up, it was normal because I remember I'd be like, me and my sister shared a room, right? It was a three bedroom house, but me and my sister shared a room and then my baby sister would be in the room with my parents, right? So we'd have an empty room that was always just with a Nintendo and a TV and that was it, you know, a beanbag Play room or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so every night you would literally hear footsteps coming up the stairs and there was like a landing midway up, right? And then you could hear them stop shuffle their feet, turn around and climb up the rest of the way. And then what, so one day I started counting the steps, right? Before I went to bed, okay, how many steps does it take? So I'm laying in bed and I, I whatever it was, walked all the way to the top. And then it's just stopped walking. Like we couldn't hear it anymore. And then one, one night we're all just dead asleep. Right. And all of a sudden I heard, uh, you know, like back in the day, back in the eighties, we had the metal blinds, you know, they're real loud. Oh and, yeah. They made the noises. Cling, 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 cling. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. So, we're all asleep and, and we had we had those metal blinds, but we, we had some over the kitchen sink or uh, window. And one night we heard someone crash through the window, the glass break, the the blinds moving. You can hear them hit the counter, the dishes falling. Fucking SWAT team. Yeah, bro. You can, <laughs> you can hear the person land on their feet on the uh, like they, they jumped off the counter onto the ground. Then you hear them running upstairs. And I woke up. We all woke up. So we all heard it. My parents, me, my, even my baby sister was crying. Like, it was like a legit. Oh, shit. Yeah, my parents thought someone broke in the house. Yeah. And who knows my parents? My parents are G's, bro. Yeah. So they're all ready to go all combat and shit. So <laughs> I, I grabbed my sister. Oh, get the gun. Back up. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so I grabbed my sister. We run to my mom's room, which was like next door. And they, they threw us underneath the bassinet. And they covered it and shit. And they oh, went and cleared shit. the house. They cleared the house. And nothing was a me- Nothing moved. There was not one dish out of place. Nothing. And no then, broken glass? Nothing. Nothing what? whatsoever. No footprints. Nothing. Nothing was amiss. And so that's one that stuck with me for a long, well, I mean, forever, I guess. But yeah. Until you said that, I was going to say it's residual. It sounds like it's the same pattern going up the stairs every night. It yeah. just keeps mm-hmm. going. But that broke the, um, yeah. that broke the, uh, yeah, it was a trip, cycle. man. Yeah, and then we moved out shortly after that. I was like, <laughs> fuck this place. <laughs> Did you guys tell them it's haunted or just say, fuck it, give me the money, we're out of here? Or just yeah, well, my mom was like, just get my deposit. Well, even the next day, we took my mom talked to the security guard that was, you know, patrolling every night. And he said, no, there was no one out around that time. You know, I forget oh, what time it was. Shit. You know, I was little. But yeah. That's fucking horrifying. What about, uh, wow, what about uh, the Rev here? Holy fuck. That's a wild uh, story, boy. Tell him about, tell, tell him about your first time at a gay bar, Rev. <laughs> He uh, feels good to have a guy buy you a drink for once. Oh, that's right. You well, guys are in California, so when in Rome, right? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> uh, not to say I haven't. All right. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> no. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> um, no. So I, I, and w- th- this goes back to like some of the conversations that me and him always have. It's like I haven't necessarily had a paranormal experience, and I don't know if partly because I've never really actually a uh, thought of th- or lend myself to believe. Not to believe in it, but to be aware of it, I should say. Right. Not that I don't believe in the paranormal. I'm open to the idea, like if I have experienced something. But I'm I'm more naturalistic when it comes to the paranormal, like in the in not in the sense where ghosts and demons and things Spectres. along those lines, yeah, uh, being like haunting. So, but the only <laughs> the place the, the few places that I've actually like that I've been that are said to be haunted are like the Winchester Mystery House was the one place that I went to that I thought was was really fun but like i said i i more enjoyed the history of it yeah that that, that was the, the big thing like to know like oh something this historic is so close by to us and yeah. i think that that was that was really cool the stories are cool um i, I just really quick i don't know because we talked about this before on one of our very first podcasts in our in our current mm. format we actually talked about the winchester uh, mystery house yeah, with the former uh, security guard yeah oh oh yeah and actually my my sister's 
uh, current boyfriend, uh, probably permanent boyfriend. But just say brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, right? boy. My brother-in-law. <laughs> my brother-in-law used to work at the Winchester Mystery House as a security guard, and he shared. He actually shared some stories that really were like were kind of interesting, and they were along the lines of the same story that we we came across online, where there was you know because they have um, the sometimes they have too. reenactment actors on. The premise. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, go ahead. You're going to tell. Well, okay. yeah. So this one instance where, you know, they do the tours and when they came to the end of the tours, of course, like any tour, you end in the gift shop. So at the gift shop, uh, the one of the a couple came through and was talking to the cashier. I was like, oh, that was really cool. You know, the, the reenactment people you had around this and the guys like, well, we don't have any today. And then another couple, another person, they kept hearing that, oh, the reenactors that you guys had today. And so finally, he asked, well, what did this reenactor look like? Because we don't have anybody that's doing that today. And this is, oh, the, it, it, it was had black hair and told him. And it was and when they w- investigated it, it was a they have a picture on site of one of the construction workers that would be because, of course, if you know the story of Sarah Winchester, right. she had employed construction workers all 24 hours, 24 hours, hours a day, day. constantly building. So and one of the pictures fit the description of somebody that used to always work on the fireplaces. And that's where they said they saw the reenactment yeah, in front actor of the was in front of the fireplace working on the fireplace. So I was like, Oh, that's pretty interesting. So, well, yeah, yeah. but other that's than that, pretty neat. that no, but that's cool. Even though if you didn't, you were there because honestly, like if he liked being there and it's got honestly, dude, there's people that I'm sure died during construction. Oh, of yeah. So he may have passed away there. That's pretty fucking wild. Um, yeah. For those of you who don't know the Winchester house, I'm sure you must have movies about it, but Sarah Winchester, um, yeah. believe it or not. And this is kind of cool. Cause I'm actually going to uh, go, t- I'm going to fill, I'm going to go full circle with where you guys have been because they're from and buried in Connecticut. Oh, wow. I'm, three, I'm three hours away. Sarah Winchester's graves on Atlas Obscura. That's no bullshit. Nice. And the, nice. the Winchester arms factory, it's abandoned and decrepit, but the place where they built the Winchester guns was in Connecticut, and that's there still. That's where she got her fortune, and that's why she made all those rooms, because the ghost of the gun, people that got killed by the gun came to her. They had seances there, as you guys know. The movie Spectacular, um, Sarah Winchester, the whole lore, she was kind of batshit crazy. The fucking, honestly, <laughs> besides history and even besides hauntings, that house must be a spectacle. There's door, doorways to the walls to nothing, the staircase yeah, to the yeah. ceiling. It's yeah. Well, you know, I've always wondered, like, even even in that show, I think we did two episodes on it. I think um, so. You know, like, well, because the Winchester bought the patent from another company who made the Volcanic rifle. Or the, it was Ooh, a I didn't know that. Yeah, it was a pistol with the same action. Uh, Henry Winchester just perfected it. But you have other, like, like Colt, uh, Smith & Wesson. You have all these other gun companies that sold way more than Winchester. And how come they weren't haunted? You know, when their guns killed more, you know, well, you know? I, I, th- I think the reasoning because because Will- Sarah Winchester experienced multiple tragedies. One was the loss of their son. Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't uncommon back then. Well, I know it wasn't yeah. uncommon, but w- w- okay, you got to remember somebody that experiences that much wealth. They're used to ease and comfort for mm-hmm. as much as they can get it. So when they experience something like that, you know, well, I mean? well, you know, OK, know. this is just my theory. And those of you that are t- uh, chiming in or, or just even your opinion, Adam, uh, what was, we, we remember we we. Worked it out to where she was making like twenty five thousand a day or something like something that, like something that. like that, whatever the number is. I I have the opinion that she was just trying to keep the economy going in San Jose, you know, employing people, <laughs> just spending the money to try to keep things going. Just that's, all, that's, that's just my opinion personally. I don't think I don't think. And then and then the paranormal aspect because. I don't think there's any writings of it being paranormal back then. It was just some weird lady building this house, you know. And then supposedly people... some girl, some psychic girl, told her, "You, y'all, right? That's better right. bullshit." She's like, "Yo, y'all, this, the people, the ghosts are the people have been killed by your dad's gun are unhappy. You need to build, keep building uh-huh. to make them happy." A room like, oh, my, my my brother-in-law owns a construction company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's but he's this guy. He wants you. Yeah. Uh, he, whoa, whoa. He'll work yeah. any day of the yeah. week. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm getting it. Yeah, the universe has spoken, but I don't he's know. Spoken. Who Oh, the fucking girl did it. She heard, like you like well, like Rev said, her kids are passed away. She's got no man. She's wearing black. She mourned every fucking day of her life. She didn't live very happy. Right. Uh, very secretive woman. So she fucking blew her money and said, "Fuck, I'm not gonna leave it to no one." I guess didn't want to leave the charity and didn't want to be alone. She always had a construction crew there. And, yeah, uh, like, like dang, that, even even weird. even so, I mean, that's still a sad existence in and of itself. But I, I don't know. I do. I, I'm from the personal. I, I believe in. Um, I don't know if I believe in like traditional hauntings, but I do believe in spirits and, and ghosts and whatnot. We're yeah. energy. As, no matter how you slice. Oh, real quick, too. My girl Heather, 
uh, Heather Witchin, Heather Kimaniti from Witchin Life Guide Show. Uh, she says, I bought the Atlas Obscura app, just iPhones for now, she guesses. Uh, she wants to know how the app is. Please use it and report back. Homework. Yay. Hey, <laughs> let me yeah, send her a firm request if you want. She's a good shit. We've been together five years. Uh, it'll be October 13th. We went and saw Friday the 13th at a drive in. <laughs> no way. Where did you, it, did you, you didn't take her. You guys met there. I, I knew her, believe it or not, I was kind of trying to go for her friend. Um, this girl, Beth, I always I, she was, <laughs> I've been on that. And I was in the rock scene. I sang in the band. I had the fucking, ah, the noose and blood calling the herd fucking, ah, you know, and, and we went for an open up for a band in Biddeford. And then I saw Heather there and I was, cause I tried for this girl, Beth for like a month and she's just fucking oh, buy me food, but not fuck anything else. So I, <laughs> I wasted my time with her. But then I met the love of my life. I said, wow. And then I came to a show one time. She goes, you're here to see me. I go, no, I'm here to see your friend, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's the way to do so it. So I've been with Heather ever since. And yeah, it'll be five years, man. She's put up with my fucking crazy shit. So, um, we actually just went uh, to Sleepy Hollow not too long ago. Oh, nice. Check out the Headless Horseman shit and stuff like that. So she's my little – we went to the Pet Cemetery house. She's my tag along. She does her homework and shit too. All right, look, two, uh, things, two things popped up. Where? Uh, so we have uh, – this is the, the Atlas Obscura app, right? Oh, dang, I'm all Yeah. Cool. So two things popped <laughs> yeah. up. Yes, though. We have the McHenry Mansion is one of them. That's a cool place if you ever have a chance. And the is that like a near me thing? You're doing near me, near you? Yeah, is that what you're doing? The, yeah, and they're just showing Modesto, and then I could zoom out to like French Camp has something. French Camp, is- yeah. And then you can type in city, states. You can type in Canada, Montreal. Yeah, and, and even like the, yeah, as a place of the day, if you're interested in that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, new it's, place. Yeah, like right now, or well, not right now, but forever. I'm first place for. The person who's been to the most Bitterford Maine stops. There's like five places in Bitterford, Maine, the town I'm by. And it oh, says, wow. You are first in Bitterford. No one will ever beat me because I went there first to their five spots. Oh, really? Nice. So it's kind of oh. Yeah, there's an old diner and there's a couple other fucking trolley cart things and shit. So <laughs> it's fun. It's like a it's like a scavenger hunt for life, man. I want to go find out where like I went to the tallest big uh Paul Bunyan statue in Bangor, 31 yeah, feet tall. It was superimposed hey. in the new well, it. It chapter two, it gets up and kills the guy or tries to yeah, kill the guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? This, this is a cool thing that you turned me on to here, Adam. Maybe me and Rev could pick a place that's relatively close by and just go do a live. Uh, do, a, do a show there. Yeah. yeah. Just set up shop and do a yes. show. Take a mobile studio. <laughs> yeah. We got a mobile studio. Yeah, the Cecil Hotel or the Whaley House or something. That's what I couldn't think of. That's the the, the De Anza. That's in LA. The, ho- the Hotel De Anza looked like that place, though. It reminded me of that. When I seen, I told my wife, I go, oh, yeah, that's the Cecil. And then he has an old sign, you know, with the just, oh, man, it was badass. We got to stay there. Oh. And I was like, I told my wife when we got there, I go, babe, we're not taking the elevator because I don't know how old that shit is. <laughs> but we end up taking it because my fat ass ain't going to walk. <laughs> yes. That's what that chick was. It was found in the water tank. They said she appears yeah. in the elevator. Lisa the Lamb. Stadium. Elisa Lamb. Damn. Chia- no, Ch- Asian student. Yep. student. Yep. Damn. Yep, from Canada. Um, so, so uh, I gotta ask you guys, what's it? You know, obviously life's short. I'm not saying you guys are old by any means, oh, but exactly. what's like if someone gave you a bucket list place in America tomorrow and said, "Hey, all expenses paid, would you go? Where would you go? New Orleans, Gettysburg, Salem?" Oh, that's interesting. That's a good. Texas. Okay. Does it have to be like a historical place, or could it just be like a any place? place. Like and giggles, like man. Like the mountains, because I want to go explore there for Bigfoot. <laughs> hey, you you're know? looking for. You're looking for the abominable snowman, man. You're looking for the uh, Yeti up there. Because, you know, I mean, we're in the West Coast, and there's a lot of reports, but you know, the Appalachian Mountains range has uh, there's largely unexplored, and I think it'd just be kind of cool to find there's some caves out there just to kind of get lost in and whatnot. I've but, never uh, heard anybody say that. For the, I asked everybody their bucket list, and I've never heard anybody really, really say Alaska area. That's kind of neat. No, the Appalachian Mountain area. Oh, oh this in Alaska. No, oh, in Alaska. Alaska too. Hey, have you heard of the the? Uh, the Bigfoot killing thing in Alaska, a couple, about a hundred. Yes, well, that's why I said it. I thought you said fucking Alaska. Oh, I was like, oh, no, no, no. I you said Appalachian Trail, the Native American Trail yeah, that leads from dude. Virginia to Maine. Yeah. Dude, you know what's funny? Where, where I live by Bangor, Maine, I'm 35 minutes from Mount Katahdin. That's where the trail ends or stops. However, oh, you look at it, it's yeah. Maine's highest point, Mount Katahdin. I live by an, an, an Indian preservation, it's an Indian township. Oh, I call them townships. It's Native Americans only in that town. You're not welcome there. If not, motherfucker, fucking eat it. And they live right down the road, man. I, where I live now, 
There's fucking snapping turtles walking around like they own the fucking place. There's eagles flying around. I'm fucking outnumbered by birds, and I love it. <laughs> That's tight. You see what I'm saying? I yeah. like that, man. But yeah, but if, if I could go to like a historically haunted place, um, I don't know. Where would you go, Rev? Haunted? I, I don't Jeez. Or known, or or just or in that realm. Known? Well, okay. So if you're talking haunted, I think I would research. I, I would want to go somewhere with Hotel an experience uh, with with an experience uh, yeah. to one of the <laughs> locations of the that the Warrens were at. I think if I were to do something, like that, um, if you're talking about just in general, like anywhere, I would want to go because I'm such a history buff. I think it would either have to be. I think it probably be ancient uh, or to to Egypt to visit. The, uh, the temples and That'd the pyramids cool. and stuff like that. Well, I'd go to would... the Colosseum in Rome. Then. Well, that would be oh. my, my Roma, Roma, right Roma, You Roma know that Greece. place is haunted. Then a motherfucker it has to be. You well, know you know what? what? The catacombs. That would be an interesting Ooh. place to go because there's catacombs in under France and under Rome, and yeah. then those are the two cities that have the largest catacombs. Damn, that would be interesting because uh, I think they're both lined. Or the story, because that's where they used to bury people. But then when they got too full, they would remove the bones, and then the, the walls are lined with, with bones. Yeah. And they It's like a- As Above, So Below. You see that movie, As Above, So Below? And they go down there, and it's a fucking cavern of skulls, and they're all staring at you. And then they go oh, to one, and it's all arm bones. And, and some are actually put together almost like with feathers, like a tribal. Yeah. And, of course, yeah. Egypt, Rev. Um, or did, Yeah, you, who's that Egypt? You said Egypt, yeah. you said Colosseum. Um, yeah, to me, dude... Um, Egypt is where shit went down, and I, and I think of course the the Incas and the Micas there in in Mexico yeah, are yeah. big too. Um, you know, even America, North America with the natives um, and the Vikings. I mean, there's so yeah. much cool shit. When you really, our history books don't tell us jack shit, and that's kind of what I like to do. You guys know that I like uncovering shit, and yeah, I like finding right. shit that you don't see every day. And, and fucking yeah, yeah. Hey, well, look, so what about uh, Rev, what about America though? I know you want to go there as far as Egypt, but what about America? Do you have a place you'd like to go, like Gettysburg? Um, wow. I would like to go to like an old um, fort, you know, like old army forts, like, you know, back yeah. in like uh, during our independence and all that shit. That'd be badass. But yeah. uh, what's up, Jeff? Fort Independence in Massachusetts. Uh huh. Hey, but we got Jeff here. He's a new guy. What's up with it? I believe Jeff's in the Warren Convent because Jeff's a friend of mine. I believe he's oh, one okay. of the Warren Legacy members. I'm, I'm friends with a lot of members. And uh, he's, he's normally quiet, but thank you for tuning in, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, right, on. right on, man. Oh, wow, that's um, we, we got five minutes to go, but if you guys don't mind going over, we can go about 10, 15 over, man. It's that's my good, brother. We're on the ride. We're, it's we're it's up to you. Do we need to get some beers going? Or <laughs> gonna... I got one more to go. <laughs> nice. No, that's fine. I, I Shit. Think... Do you mind if I go grab a beer then? I'm thirsty. Go ahead. Go grab a beer. I'll be right, grab I'm gonna one meet... for me. Go ahead. You have hey, five I'll minutes. You got I'll take one too. Rev, take oh. over. Rev, take yeah. over. Anyway, so welcome. Now that we got rid of the dead weight, now we can really get the conversation started. <laughs> <laughs> not even out of the room yet. <laughs> Is that a fat joke? <laughs> no, he's not even in the shot. No. I, and it's really interesting because, like I said, as a history guy, there's almost not one place I would I could really think of. Like, I'm not really too much in, like, the Civil War stuff. So, like, Gettysburg. Shots. Getty, I know, right? Gettysburg is the uh, 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 a good place. I know for the I've learned after our conversations with Dr. Heather Lee has been a really interesting hotbed for like the paranormal stuff. I guess when it comes like, you know, OK, so here's what I would like. One of the if I could pick any time that I had to pick to go back in time to, I think it would be the old west, like the old frontier days, like in the plains of Texas and Oklahoma and things along those lines. Even in California, I think I would go back to those times where it kind of that was that was the last time in history where you actually felt like you could escape society and be free outside of, you know, the old law. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's badass. Yeah. So I, I think I think if there's anywhere I would want to go to would be probably somewhere in the you, Adam. in in the, hey, in the southwest. Probably like the southwest, one of those old uh, time places anyways. But yeah. Hey, be careful guys. These two guys got corona, but I don't. Why not want one? Uh, yeah, we got corona. You remember that? Where the fuck did that go? That was up everybody's ass for oh, some years now. Like, oh, oh, fucking yeah. party, you sick <laughs> oh wow. You got, yeah, conspiracy theory. Yeah, coronavirus. Oh, uh, trust me, I've been a conspiracy oh, yeah. between chemtrails and black eyed kids, <laughs> hey, hey, the, hey, the chemtrails- lizard people, and the Bilderbergs. And fucking- hey, but chemtrails is no longer a theory. It's been, it's, the, the United States Air you Force don't says. not anymore, though. No, yeah, you do. Because, yeah. yeah, the U.S. Air Force actually said, yeah, we are spraying heavy metals to protect you from, because, you know, we have gaps in the ozone. Protect and we'll do- you from yourself. So it's, it's no longer a theory once you have. 
people admitting to it. Because if you see contrails, they only last for a few couple seconds. You know, there's I mean? a difference, and then they spread out and they're gone. They get these chemtrails that last. They'll last for, chemtrails, they'll last for weeks and days here, and whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yo, but but they openly admitted it. You know, they're like, yeah, we are, but this is to protect you guys. I'm like, okay. You bro. don't think that shifts the weather? Why is the whole world 180 fucking degrees right yeah, now? Right. It's September 1st tomorrow. Uh -huh. Shout out to my birthday, by the way, next Tuesday. Hey, oh, next your oh, hey! hey, I might go. I might go live on here by myself and just talk about bullshit because fuck it. Or I may not even have a show because I got court the next day. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, I got to answer to the man. No, well, here, here's an interesting thing topic that I've been looking into actually, considering that I told you I have family in Vegas. So one of the biggest news stories out out of Vegas right now. Oh man, wish we could. I mean, we should do a beer podcast. Yeah, as we should. Oh, Jeff's the Warren director. Oh, gay. Okay. Oh, nice. nice sir. I've actually been upgraded to regional historians. I'm the historian of the Northeast, man. Nice. nice. I went from researcher yeah, and the guy's like, you know what? You're a historian. Huh? I should be. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just made Rev the mascot. So. <laughs> Get off your knees, people. Get up. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. You love me. You really love me. <laughs> no, but like, so for instance, considering that I know people, I have family back in Vegas. So one of the biggest stories out there right now is the, as the, the Lake Mead is emptying. Um, and then I have a family member who actually is from Vegas saying it's done intentionally. The government is intentionally no, really? draining Lake Mead and there, there's, it's, it's there, they're wow. creating all this thing. Like Enron, you know, they're allowing, you know, when they're doing the rolling blackouts on yeah. purpose. Well, so. yeah. Well, but anyway, so you go back to that and then the, the most interesting thing about it is the bodies that that are that are coming up that they're finding now that are popping out of yeah. the really? yeah oh well, yeah you haven't like heard of we're tied down with weights like mafia oh, yeah yes. yes. five, uh, 55 gallon the barrels, barrels and shit they're finding yeah bo bones and barrels are finding oh there are people shitting their pants across fucking the west coast right now folks <laughs> uh -huh. oh that's yeah, huge I news i watch yep. a lot of that like uh, whitey bulger and gaudy and they dump bodies and that's what they do they put weights and bags and they go fuck it who's gonna dig them up but sometimes man yeah no it's interesting it's something to look into like well, heather, oh. was saying, heather was saying that there was a pet cemetery somewhere around there that was a big mafia dump too for bodies yeah so it's really yeah it's really interesting so that's one of the things that we're probably I, there's a couple of youtubers that i follow that are they're actually not associated necessarily with the with mead lake but they're outdoor enthusiasts in the las vegas area but they've wow. been tracking and documenting oh the father son team yeah, yeah been, they're cool they've been tracking and documenting about i want to try to get them on our show that'd be kind of cool oh, dude. but yeah. they've, been, they've been tracking and documenting the the lake for now it's like the, 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 I, and i've been there and i've swam in lake mead but at the wow. same <laughs> yeah dead body water dead body water in my mouth <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, that's not all no. <laughs> hold your breath yeah, no uh, shit. But it's wonder been, why you got pink eye, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but it's been it's been interesting to kind of look into that. But yeah, it's really it's 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 abnormal to see the amount of water that's been dumped, and then you hear about global warming and whether or not you believe in that. I do believe that the that the the Earth is warming, but I don't believe necessarily it's due to human causes. But so it's just an interesting thing to look into. You like know, I think people forget though that the Earth goes through these cycles. They go through, yeah, yeah, they go through certain cycles. Look at, the, look at the suppose we know a Zark with a flood. Look at the big freeze. They cut the dinosaurs out. But every, at the same every, time, every, every to think that these years and years of factory smoke didn't do fucking some kind of damage. No, you know, oh, yeah, no, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah, then, yeah. but then, but then you got to remember too. I mean. Uh, everything wants to come back to homeostasis, you know, including Mother Nature, including this planet. So it will eventually could fix itself, and, and with yeah, reduction yeah. and with reductions in in in, oz in all these ozone polluting, uh, depleting, you know, particulates yeah. that we've been not putting in for for decades now. Uh, I, I think it's been been helping, but um, no, there there there's a good bit. By George Carlin. Are you familiar with the comedian George Carlin? I just watched the thing earlier on Netflix. Or something with Heather or my dad came over to see my. I've only had three visitors. My dad's my third. I've been here for two months. I live way the fuck out. I live literally like four hours into Maine if you hit the border. So people don't really come out here, which is fine. But we watched George Carlin. And he was like his new stuff, and he's just fucking. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, George yeah. Carlin's a who. Yeah. You know, I have no one like that. Andrew Dice Clay's close, but no one like George Carlin. Oh, yeah, nobody yeah. like George Carlin. But he had a bit talking about like you know like. The, the the same subject but really i don't want to get into it because i won't do it justice just look it up he talks about <laughs> he talks about it though yeah well, but <laughs> oh, sorry. drop my roach uh oh oh, no. <laughs> oh i dropped it again yeah. <laughs> i had two beers and they're like eight percent so fucking oh, uh, um I remember my first beer <laughs> you got a couple minutes left but hey you guys saw the picture but look huh only four hundred dollars 
That no, that is awesome. Damn. I am envious. If I have not been envious, I am envious of that. I do Dang. want a gold we, uh, wing eagle belt. <laughs> I wore it to my first SmackDown in Boston, and <laughs> his thing's like twenty pounds, dude. It's like the real plates. And after about an hour, I'm like, oh, this was a fucking mistake. I look at Heather, I go, oh, because you, you know, you're packed in like sardines unless you get ringside. So the yeah. guy next to me is touching it, he's rubbing, it, and everybody's coming up, going, I remember the eagle. And they're all touching that. Go fucking touch my shit. I gotta <laughs> polish this thing. And they all go, I, I remember that. And then they love my tattoo. They go, oh, yeah. cool. which I love. But sometimes I'm like, fuck me. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we gotta do. We gotta have you back nice. on to do another WWE or wrestling, uh, wrestling nice. podcast. That was really fun for me because, like, that, that yeah, because I that we I want to play the 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 vocab game again. Oh that shit, the, the one I failed the one miserably. I don't think you, what's you, a mark? Uh, um, a mark is someone who sets up the lighting. <laughs> no, <whatever. laughs> in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's funny? My girlfriend played along too, and she got both of them right. She's like, "Oh, oh yeah. she goes, oh, I pop, I pop, yeah." I yeah. tell her it's, it's it's really is you know, and I'm not gonna get off subject here. I guess we have the whole thing, so fuck anybody that watches that doesn't like it. But we're gonna go on <laughs> wrestling real quick here, and I think, as you know, man, with life. You turn on the news and there's suicide bombings and school shootings and corona outbreaks. And I get it. You need to know this shit. But sometimes I'm like, let me watch brainless shit for three hours. And you turn on these athletic motherfucking dudes and chicks. And they're out there busting their ass with these crazy storylines. And sure, it's goofy. Sure, it's silly. Sure, it's fucking, whoa, what is this? But at the same time, <laughs> man, it's a fucking release. It's and I release, think yeah. we need that because life needs to be entertaining. Otherwise, you blow your fucking yes. brains out, you know? Yeah, well, well sure. one of the things, like considering history, because I like looking at the history and everything. How did things come to be? But one, yeah. of the, one of the things I remember being really fascinated about, even in high school and, and when the Internet was still in its infancy, so to speak, is that I remember I came across this website that documented all the dead professional wrestlers. Oh, snap. Whoa. And the, one of the interesting themes, of course, back in those days, there was like how, how young they all were when they died. And, and it's really interesting. I do want to do a podcast. Maybe it'd be an interesting show to do with you. And uh, it's not suicides and overdoses. No, even though some, are, some are like airplane accidents, car crashes, fucking one, uh, one of the wrestlers' wife killed them, I think, or something. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, Dino Bravo got killed by the mob. Like yep, Chris Benoit yep. killed his family than himself. Like, like oh, Amityville Hart. shit. Like it's this. I don't know if it's a wrestling curse or if it's the juice, maybe the steroids, or living on the road so much and you get you almost a persona. But then some yeah. come out squeaky clean. Undertaker, Mark Calloway has never done anything wrong. And the dudes, in, you know. Yeah. So I, it's it yeah. attacked oh, some people. I think well, Jesus it's, Snake almost died. Well, well, yeah, yeah. exactly, and I, and I think it's I think a lot of that plays in the part because you think of some of the wrestlers that are dead, and you kind of look at you rewind the tape, for instance, like for instance, um, uh, uh what's the the uh, oh, I forgot his name, the other half of the British Bulldogs, not Davy Boy, um, um, Dynamite Kid, Dynamite Kid, yeah. You look at for instance his like like his story, and you kind of realize, okay, I could understand how somebody like that would would succumb to to what he succumbed to, but then again, it's still a tragic story. Then you look at for instance Owen Hart. A pure Whoa. tragedy and no, you know, no sense. Of, and and another thing I wanted to talk to you about, like, like that live on pay per view. Did you? But you, they, they didn't show the. No, they came to the go. Hey, he did an interview on the Blue Blazer, blah blah blah. And then all of a sudden yeah, they go, oh. and then Jr. goes, "Well, guys, sometimes things happen in life." And I'm like, "What is he talking about? Yeah. Must have been 18 or whatever." I, and, my uh, thing is though, because wow. here, here's the because I know that I know they have the tape. The uh, WWE have the tape. Of the incident, but they won't. They will never release it, so to speak. They go. We didn't I, have cell phones back then. No, been all over YouTube. That was my oh, point. Snap. If you would have imagined, like, if somebody had that, that is like the what? What do they call it? Lost media, so to speak. That's the 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 holy grail of lost media. But the only people that actually have it are WWE, because yeah, at that point, wow. somebody had a camcorder <laughs> going at the time, and, 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 <laughs> and wow. you had to speak But, back but then. the thing is, though, everybody's attention wasn't in the ring; it was at the D Drumbletron because they were playing the promo. He didn't that, get oh, called uh, out yet, right? He no. slipped before his music even hit. He just dropped. Everybody's like, "What the fuck?" A dummy fell, and then they looked, and yeah, and well, yeah, hit the turnbuckle and snapped in his neck the way he landed. It's it like sixty foot fall right that was like 70 feet or something like that but yeah then it was interesting is when you hear the wow, comments damn. when you hear that when you there there was a dark side of the ring episode by vice they did an episode of it and you watched like the i think it was uh who i think it was uh that he was fighting godfather and godfather was at the gorilla position 
I know that it probably doesn't know what that means. But... <laughs> <laughs> and that's not porn. Get your mind out of the gutter, Playboy. Not the gorilla position. I remember that position. Porn or that rest. is a thing, though. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it was really interesting to, to and that was one thing I wanted to I, I want to do a show on is like talking about like all these specific deaths and maybe Damn, going to, yeah, going that'd to be cool. About, yeah. I thought that would be a really good topic. Well, it's to not cool you that on. they die. No, it's not but cool, it's, but it's, you know, it's I mean, but these are real life. These are just like basically like. Undertaker, so to speak, and I'm not going to you know, it's like Spider-Man. It's like comic book people coming to life. That's what wrestlers are. It's like, to me, yeah. I'm like, these are these larger than life people that when I grew up, they were from parts unknown, but now <laughs> they got biographies that is like they're finding their own ring gear now to try to start a Hall of Fame. They're paying money. Yeah. You watch that, that's pretty neat. And yeah. I really find myself intrigued by these stories, especially Stone Cold interviews people, and they talk about their pain, their addictions. Jeff Hardy getting drunk. You've seen that. Yeah. You want to watch a video on YouTube, watch Psycho Sid breaking his leg in WCW, jumping off oh. the top of his leg bends. That's a fucking video. That's what they would have done with Owen. That's what they would have done with Owen. There'd be 900 views of Owen's neck snapping off the turnbuckle in half. Oh. Some, some things are better off unseen. I think that, that, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I gotta, yeah. Have you seen that? Uh-uh. I'm going to show it to him. Uh, yeah. Oh, my fucking God. He lifts up his leg and his. Oh, you'll see. It's just. Oh, blah, 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 blah. oh boy. Psycho <laughs> Sid Vicious, or, or he went by other names to Sid Justice. Sid Justice. Um, I'm the ruler of the world. He's, he's a big fucking cat. But yeah, he jumped over the top rope and he didn't quite buckle his knee. He so was older, speak. and that's another thing too with these guys that are older. Uh, it's like kind of like when they're still doing this. It's like they shouldn't be. Oh, I, okay. I, wait, I, I found it online. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh. <laughs> oh, you see him lift it up and it just dangles like a piece of yeah. spaghetti. Oh, Psycho Sid breaks leg. Oh yeah, yeah. guys. Oh uh, yeah, that's hey, better him than me. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Boy, know. That is the coolest looking fake broken leg I've ever seen. Movie shit. Uh huh. Yeah. That's green screen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I, I don't take offense anymore to wrestling's fake. I, I understand it's the outcome, but these motherfuckers are athletes. Fuck off. There's no way that Bianca Belair couldn't kick my fucking ass. That chick is stacked. Rhea Ripley, yeah. all these broads. I honestly get more of enjoyment watching the chicks, not because they're so hot, but because, like, even Heather says, like, like, um, Raquel Gonzalez, tag team champion. These chicks now, they blew the doors off Trish Stratus and CeCe Keebler and Lita, who paved the way. But the girls now are basically Chinas, but they're built like chicks. They, you'd see them in public, you wouldn't think they're jacked. And they're, it's, I love it. It's killer. Yeah. That's another um, story, Chinas. Yeah, China. She's dead. She overdosed. Yep. Don't mean to laugh. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so fucking a man. We get about. Uh, we can go about three more minutes or so. You guys want to say anything that I haven't yet? Give maybe another plug to your stuff. Yeah, well, if anybody finds us interesting, and we're going back to the idea of like podcast. Yeah, everybody does a podcast. I know we've been, but we have music and stuff. Yeah, but- <laughs> yeah. They're, on, they're on YouTube. I actually found them the other day. I said I'm not subscribed yet, so I subscribed. I'm sure you saw it. Well, yeah, no, thank you for that. No, but yeah, so we, <laughs> in, in all disclosures, like we, we don't have a huge following and, and we're fine with that because what we do, we have fun. Like we we, we move from music. Well, now that we move from music, we might go back and dabble into back into music. But at the same time, it's like we do this because more certainly we want to have fun. It would be nice to make money doing it. And we're, we're our goal is eventually hopefully build to that Amen. platform. But at the same yeah, time, it, I, I just can't wait to make this my full-time yeah. job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have to yeah. go work for the man and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, dude, when I hear shit out there, like I love Joe Rogan, but yeah. when you see these other podcasts, like even Talk is Jericho, they're not doing anything that we're not. And, and the, the number one thing is, just like you guys, you have heart like me. I, I'm historically haunted, but I always go to the movies. I always go to food. I always go to, to wrestling because I like to... Like you guys, it's very much an open table. I don't want to just be, right. you seen demons? What do you do with demons? Do you like sage? Yeah, Ouija boards? Okay, all right, have a good night. <laughs> like, I want to be, you know what I mean? I want to mix it up. And I think that's where people like us fall in line. And I think that you guys are a riot. You're very fun to talk to. And I and I know I am. I think that, you know, like any network would, would be tickled pink. Like, I'd love to go on an Atlas Obscura thing, like do a show Atlas Obscura and us three um, get I think paid I, to go I, to their sites I, and talk yeah, to them. Yeah, I think it have us go to it yeah like you said to their sites and just explore and just start off 50 have a season every episode we a half hour episode we examine that's where i found real quick the tombstone house in richmond virginia it's a house made out of uh 30, 000 civil war tombstones because they cut them in half to make room so the bottom part without the name the guy bought them for like 600 bucks in 1908 and he made his house out of it and i went there and the asian lady owns it she let me touch the walls they're all marble i got pictures they're all marble slats uh-huh. Headstones from Civil War soldiers, and I found that as obscure. So it's cool shit. 
Yeah, like man. That. If they want to create a show and put us on there, man, let's do it. Yeah, Adam, so we're down. open to being on anybody's podcast. We're kind of we're podcast whores. So <laughs> if you if you got a podcast, we would love to. But not only that, like we're, we're open to talk to anybody. Like one of the biggest things, especially because I know it's like if you listen to our show long enough, you're going to know our political leanings, and we're fine with that. But the thing is, though, we don't box people out. The biggest thing is wanting to have interesting conversations with people, especially people that disagree with us. If you don't believe ghosts exist, it's the stupidest thing in the world. Talk to us about it. We would like to talk about it. If you think our politics are shit and you don't we think we're wrong, talk to us about it. That is what makes life interesting. The thing that I'm seeing is there's this trend of if you don't agree or, or with somebody, you got to cut them out of your life. Oh, yeah. but you, bash you bash them. Yeah. You bash them. But in all reality, that's how you grow as a person. You don't have to agree with them, but that's how that's yeah. how we grow and we learn. Because if not, then what you're going to do is you're going to find yourself in a box and you're going to find yourself in a place where you're never going to be able to advance, not only in this world, but also in society. You're not going to learn how to communicate with people. Communication starts with finding people that you can find a common ground with even if you don't agree on everything right and i think that yeah, that's and, what and no on. one no one can agree on everything you're right yeah. you're right yeah but anyways I mean, yeah. families fight people get in, in things about well i like this president it's just at the end of the day you think that, <laughs> yeah. you think that you think that fucking obama or fucking trump's going to bed going i wonder if adam really likes me like who gives a fuck <laughs> you really want to fucking like it's good to have an opinion like you said i love how you approach that it's almost like changed my mind i'm yeah. willing to have a civil conversation on why that you think that right. i think this should change or that should change yeah. a lot of things i don't give two fucks about especially after all the shit i've been through and that's why I just say fuck it. And I go to cemeteries and Stephen King's house and I go to Paul Bunyan's dad Jews. And then someone shows up, I go, uh, I shut my phone off and I go back in my car and smoke a joint and go home. <laughs> but I mean, but but then I find my people like you fucking cats, where I know if I live close to you guys, I'd be a fucking probably bugging you every day. Because yeah. I love well, you guys. Right and right we, now, right? Seriously, and if we didn't agree on shit, I know all three of us could talk civil. At the end of the day, I wouldn't go, yeah. I fucking hate you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, definitely. No, but you know, it's fun to, to disagree. And and I think well, that's what it's a blessing and a curse on our show because we're so like minded, me and Rev. Yeah. That it's sometimes it's hard we for us to find yeah. something to disagree on. We have just, to bring other people on. Yeah, because otherwise it's we'd just be like, gonna, Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Show's over. Bye. <laughs> 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 but it's fun. Is that enough peanut butter? <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. No, it's too much. Just kidding. It's perfect. Ah. Uh -huh. Do you put jelly or peanut butter on first? You asshole. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but that's what bonds you guys. You guys can tell you guys got a good bond. You almost finish each other's sentences, even though you don't cut each other off. <laughs> well, seriously, you guys can tell you guys when, when when Rev says something, you know, Playboy's like, yep, like he agreed the same thing. And that's what I think is unity. I miss that. I had a best friend and he died of it, unfortunately. And no, um, I got another good friend who's great from New Hampshire, but this other guy was kind of like you guys. Like I could literally talk to him while I was being on the shit, or I could be on the toilet shitting, being like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like oh, I'm gonna run, I'm not gay. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> I got this guy's house now. Yeah. <laughs> you, you tuck it in and show him the mangina. Look, Bill. Woo, you know. <laughs> it's an innie. <laughs> yeah, it's an innie. Wow. But why in trouble for that? But yeah, that was good back in the day. That was my boy, and you can tell you guys got that closeness, and I miss that. I get that with Heather. She, she is, she's. I mean, like I said, she's a chick, and I don't mean shit, obviously, but she is super loving and super respectful, and just like you guys, she's adventurous. Yeah. Nice. She just, she knows how to hold the conversation about life. Right. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing here. Sure, podcasts and, and hauntings and books and all that bullshit's fun. And being part of the Warren Convention, being part of whatever. But it comes down to it, man. You guys are good people and your families must support you and, and dig what you're doing. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And you always got a friend in us, brother, for sure. You got a friend in me. Uh -huh. I wish I Everybody had. Everybody says that and then they ignore me for four months after they're on my show. So uh, and all, uh, all of a sudden, after we hang up today, you're like, hey, where, how come they're not on my feed anymore? Oh my God. People <laughs> are on my show. They go, I love the show. Adam, then I look and it's like, fuck it. I'm restricted, maybe. I don't fucking know. I go, well, really? Yeah. Gonna say? They go, I love your energy, fucking loser block. <laughs> uh, they're reporting you and shit. Like, You're on Facebook jail and shit. Well, uh, yeah. Like, so either one of us blows up first. We'll, 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 we'll promise to bring you on. I <laughs> send up invites. I send out invites to the show. I've been sharing. I always do. I try to. When I was on the show, I love sharing it because nice. you guys reached out to me and I was like tickled pink. And I, I had to have you back. So we're getting out of time. Uh -huh. because we can go until about 8.20. we get three minutes. Okay. But I'd love to have you guys on my radio show. If you guys are on the same phone frequency, I can have you both on at once. Otherwise, okay. it'd be one at a time because it's through Skype, even though it's audio. 
Yeah. No, yeah, we could do that through all through the board. We could mix, mix everything through the board. We send it, you know, both of us, just like we are now, straight through the board. Yeah. Well, that's what I figured with one number. So um, I'm booked to Halloween, which will be the end of my first oh, year. It's wow. been a whole year. My year anniversary wow. is Halloween. Nice. So I'd love to book you guys around Thanksgiving time. Maybe we could talk a little bit about oh. haunted. Like you that. know what? We actually wanted to do uh, 13 Ghosts of Halloween or whatever it is, something like, to, you know, or I mean, for Christmas, around Christmas time. You know, there's. There's got to be a lot of uh, haunted stories around Christmas time. There just has to be. I have oh, to be Ooh, and not just Krampus, like you said you talked about earlier. Right, but right, right. You know me, dude. I'm a, I'm a fucking I'm a podcast whore. I'd love to come on your show and talk about myself for an hour again. So you yes. ever want me? <laughs> Fine. Hell, and Heather, my girl, she's got a lot to talk about. She goes with me to these places. She did dowsing rods. Nice. She'd nice. love to be on. She's a good shit, and she's a witch. And uh, yeah, it's a trip, man. Seeing Stephen King stuff. And I think is if people want to share it, man. If you want to see my stuff real quick, I'm going to plug myself. Adam, the historian, ghost hunter. I, I reached 100 likes or subscribes last week, and now I'm at 123, and I didn't know if I was going to come in my pants or fucking do a cartwheel. <laughs> or a little bit of both. You'll see that, right? Yeah, why not? It'd be kind of a trick. But then there's people that got thousands. Go, I got a 1,000. I go, what the fuck? I go to these places. I go to tombs and shit. But I'm trying to reach people. Um, and you guys are on YouTube, all your shows. We're yeah. on uh, the Apocalypse Project. I don't think it says podcast, right? Just the Apocalypse yeah, it's just the Apocalypse Project on YouTube, Apocalypse Project on Facebook, and then all the social, uh, I mean, audio podcast platforms. You can find us there. And like I said, if the, if you, and we're gonna talk to Adam off off air, but I was like, Adam's gonna recommend anybody that he knows that would would, would love to talk to us. Um, yeah, and vice versa. So yeah, hell yeah, awesome, Jeff. And like I said, uh, Jeff too. I know you're part of the Warren. Um, these guys actually got to get turned on by me through Heather. Um, I watch watch a show I was on. That's on their YouTube channel. I watch it again. I, I have no shame in watching myself. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I, 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 I watch you guys. Like, yeah, we had Heather Lee on. I think you had Father Ken, who you knew as Ken Torres then, but then he became yeah. Father. Uh huh. We, we Ken Torres and Father Ken. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, shit. Um, this this hour and twenty minutes flew by. I'll have the hard copy up on YouTube tomorrow. I'll put it on your guys' pages. Slap cool. you around a little bit. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. Shit, this was a blast, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Time flew. I was worried that we weren't going to talk about shit, but we talked about it. Oh, man, it's always a good time. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. yeah, we always Hell have yeah. a good time. Uh, what do we see? I missed it. I want to check them out, you too. Yeah, um, I get my Historically Haunted page where all my vodcast. It's on YouTube. It's just Historically Haunted. All my vodcast and my radio shows, hard copies go up. Like I said, radio shows are audio only, but I still have copies. And nice. they're always replayed. And um, if you look at my Facebook page, you'll see these uh, beautiful gentlemen up there as well. <laughs> you'll, you'll see this on the page, Historically Haunted Vodcast with a V. And of course, their page, like I said, the Apocalypse Project on Facebook. It's got an A, it's all like a black A with a white background. Yeah. And, you see um, it behind us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just look for Oh, that. shit. There it is. And they talk to everything from UFO hunters to fucking uh, you know, everything. Whatever. I mean, as you can tell, this hour was kind of all over the place. You guys like my background? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I spent a oh, lot of time on that. Perfecting I thought those that things shit. were motorized. A couple of them were moving. Ah, well, I went from being homeless, living in an RV for three years, to getting my own trailer. I own it, twenty thousand dollars. Nice. nice, right on, and brother. I got all my toys out back, all my Ghostbusters, Rob Zombie. Then I got my. I'm staring at that the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I got my Alexa next to me. I got my Jaeger. Heather's cool with it. So <laughs> You she, tell, she loves Yellow Wolf, the rapper. She loves Yellow Wolf. You like him? Oh, Yellow Wolf style. Yellow yeah. Wolf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Don't make literally went and ordered fucking creek water just to drink it. Yeah, Yellow Wolf's dope. We got to meet him. Like, oh, I like how he incorporates a little bit of rock with like, yeah. country, with like rap, like almost like Eminem, right. but he's himself. That Alabama. Yeah, it's cool. Like, you guys like Yellow Wolf, huh? Yeah. Yeah, familiar. Yeah. The there first go, time I ever heard from him was that Pop the Trunk. That was that was the first time I ever heard of Yellow Wolf. Don't make me go pop the trunk. That yeah, was that's kind of like an old school, almost like a Run DMC feel to it. Uh -huh. like, or, Beast, or Beastie Boys. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you guys are fun. We talk rap. We talk wrestling. We talk... Sure. Oh, shit. All right, real quick. Fuck you guys. I'm taking two more minutes of your time. <laughs> what's, what's you guys' go-to for food? Like, oh. like steak, burger, pizza? If you guys got to go to an event... Or like a long journey, or like what's your like ritual? Well, you know what? Instead of for, for breakfast, instead of your traditional breakfast, it's got to be like a burger or steak. But uh, I I Holy could eat shit. breakfast. I could eat breakfast for dinner. I never really eat breakfast for breakfast, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm I'm a good old hearty boy. I could eat some meatloaf, uh, steak, porterhouse, old pasta, shit like that. But you're eating uh, fucking like, pancakes at nine at night, uh -huh. <laughs> right? But I, I love food. Food is my thing, man. I I love food. You're I ain't, a foodie. I'm not prejudiced. I'll eat it. I'll is eat there it. a certain restaurant around there that you got to go? It's like one of a kind. I mean, I've never been to like a Jack in the Box or a White Castle or nothing. 
Oh, really? <laughs> uh, you never been to a Jack in the Box? I've been to a Sonic. I love Sonic, but oh, cool. I think over here on the West Coast, what's popular is like the uh, In and Out. In and Out. No, there's not a In and Out. I've heard a lot about that movie stars that have the guilty pleasure. Yeah, I think yeah, Britney yeah. Spears said that the fries give her the farts. Oh, no, those fun. the fries are disgusting. That's why everybody. I don't the fry. I hate them. unless you get them animal style. Well, unless you get them animal yeah. style, that, that's a whole other. That's a whole other. That? So, oh, man, yeah. it's like with cheese. It, 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 I don't know if it's Thousand Island, but it's their yeah, no, it's sauce. Thousand Island roast, and, uh, and roasted and grilled onions. Grilled and, onions. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah, good. So it's a, right on top of them. So yeah, there's a they can get a whole topic of <laughs> shit. Now I'm hungry, guys. <laughs> <damn it. laughs> yeah, Jeff, definitely check them out. Yeah, it's before dinner time over here because we're three hours uh, back from you. Well, yeah, yeah you... I'm at eight thirty almost. Oh, we're only um, at, at okay, five. Real, uh, real quick, what about you, uh, Sir Revron? So, so I, I'm, so I'm not. I guess I'm less of a man because I like grilling, but I grill on a Traeger. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you know what a Traeger is. A Traeger, a Traeger grill. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a pellet grill. It's so like an oven. It's, yeah. <laughs> I call it an oven. It's basically an oven. So you get the pellet, you pour it in the hopper, you turn it on, oh, and, and then cute. it feeds it into the thing, and it heats up. Do you up. wear a little maid's costume when yeah. you do that? Little high heels <laughs> oh, and shit up. With the heels ready, it. honey. The and then, yeah. Oh, the little peppers he, are ready. He pulls his little tampon string out when it's preheated. <laughs> He's like, yes. So quick. Uh -huh. I, I do my try tip on there. Hey, it's easy and it tastes good because no, but you know it, it is easy and it does taste good. <laughs> yeah. but, but I'm more. I like all the hoops of getting the charcoal out, nah, getting the charcoal I'm ready. I'm too lazy for that. And getting the wood chips <laughs> soaked and I like all that. But that's just my deal. You know what I mean? I just I like, like I just like pushing a button, turning a dial. There we go. You know? I don't <laughs> know. You need your own man. I like fucking Domino's. Prag and deliver. So try tip. I love I love grilling some try tip. That's where I. Like. Oh shit. Um, you know who that girl is? That's that's my other girl. Oh, wow, pimp. You know Gigi Dolan, right, Rev? The redhead oh. chick from Toxic Attraction with oh. Bailey Rose on NXT. So she wrestled. You know what's funny? You, going back to your tampon story real quick. There's a YouTube, <laughs> yeah. Listen, there's a YouTube video. If you type in Gigi Allen. In the, uh, Gigi Allen. That's why is she, she hangs herself. Hanging out? Like, if you oh. look up Gigi Dolan, independent wrestling, she's wrestling a chick, and she opens up her tights. Puts her hand in there, whips out a bloody tampon, and puts it in the chick's mouth. And oh. all the crowd goes, You sick fuck! You <laughs> sick fuck! You said it's independent. It's like an affair or something. And whether it's real blood or not, but she whipped it out of her tights right in the front of the tampon, bloody, and put it in the chick's mouth. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's actually pretty cool. I like that. Well, no, you know what that reminds me of? me on so, a little bit. So re <laughs> remember, like, who was it? <laughs> who was it that they was doing the, the, the fascination gimmick with uh, 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 where it was just like the, the, the lesbian gimmick? Can you uh, say that anymore? Probably oh, not. Oh, um, well, didn't uh, didn't um, who was it? It uh, was didn't Lana want to marry Bobby Lashley after she left Rusev, and, and then Liv Morgan comes out and goes, "What about us?" Like Liv Morgan and Lana were lesbians. No, it Remember was that? it was earlier than that. I'm talking about it was like either Attitude Era or right after Attitude Era. It was uh, all the chicks kissed back then. Sable always kissed Stacey. No, but there, there there was the one where where they did like an angle where one of the wrestlers was like fascinated with somebody else, and they wrestled, and then they kind of did the whole like touching, and then the Paige did that. Was it? I don't remember. I, I got to. Paige did that with Nikki Bella, I think. She licked her oh. face or something. No, I got to. Oh, now nah, it's going to kill me. I'm not. I, I shouldn't know that. Was it's it Nikki? Sad that, it's not sad, but it's so it's weird sad. that wrestling's got like eight or nine lesbian fucking angles. Scenes. Yeah. I love it. Oh, I, I forget. I'll, uh, we'll talk about I'll remember it. I'll remind you next time. Hot. Next time, we, next time we have you on the show, I'll, I'll remind you because I yeah I just remember that was one of the. We're talking, will be all flustered. It, it was one of the most like when you're talking about inappropriate. Not enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I don't yeah. give a fuck. Head is down with that. Head is down with the clown. She's got her favorite. She thinks. Uh, she thinks Gigi's got an ama amazing ass. Mandy Rose as well. Um, so I mean, the ch but the chicks don't just look pretty. These fucking broads will lift you over their shoulders and power drive you through a fucking table. Don't threaten me. They'll it's walk away going, mm. <laughs> "It's like wow, uh -huh. amazing." Um. Anyway, shit. All right, we gotta go. Well, we got three more minutes. Fuck it. <laughs> Well, I'm allowed like 12 hours a month, and I only go every other week, and I try to keep it an hour. Usually people are in a big hurry to go and watch Pokemon or something. So, <laughs> talking, so. as long as you guys don't mind, we can technically go another three minutes, and then we get a call in, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's on you, brother. Yeah, it's on you, man. We're on your show. You're you're the captain of this ship. Oh, man. Well, I, I fucking I'm – I love that. I just love the mutual respect. I put on the bottom there that you guys – if you guys see the little rotating thing. Oh, I don't yeah. know why it's salmon colored or why it's pink for, but whatever. I'll, 
Uh, usually <laughs> I had it on red, but um, it says you guys got a YouTube channel down there. Would you guys gonna follow these guys? All their shows are there. Please. What about your rap stuff, guys? <laughs> oh, your, we didn't even we didn't touch on that yet. <laughs> oh yeah, you can find that on YouTube too. But yeah, it's, uh, so, play .b Productions. So we yeah, our uh, we we the last performance we did we and what was interesting this is actually connected because we we performed at a at a local club. They did something for Halloween called oh, Fright Night, Night. Yeah. and Ooh. so we actually did a performance where it was kind of like horror based. I came up with the idea. I was like, oh, okay. So we had this song that we did that had a lot of like horror elements in it. It had like a bell chiming. It had a wolf. It had a like howling. Like oh, howling. I love that shit. Creepy. So, so if you go to if you or if you go to the Apocalypse Project podcast, I actually recently just uploaded it because I came across videos going through all of our old our oh, archives. archives. So I went through all of our stuff. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, so I forgot about this. So I found the original <laughs> audio. So I kind of married it because we didn't we didn't have the original audio recorded for the for the performance. But if you go to the Apocalypse Project podcast uh, page, I actually have it uploaded there, and you could actually hear the actual, uh, uh, yeah, both live and and, and studio uh, oh, recording oh, overlaid it, so you can actually hear both. So kind of yeah. you can actually make out because what you said because the the video that was shot there was all cell phone stuff, and so the audio kind of sucked ass. Yeah, but. so this is like years ago before we had all the stuff we had now. But anyways, so yeah, I had help. So my my goal was like, oh, so what if we went out there and we all wore like so our we had a third uh, person in our group at the time. So he went out there in this creepy clown outfit, and we had a, a oh. video playing of like the creepy clowns yes. and stuff like that was going so, through a haunted house. Going through a haunted yeah. house. So he went out there and wrapped, you know, had a mask on. And then me and him came out from the back with like these these horror masks, and then we just stood honestly in the background until our verses came up, and then we just oh. went. To the oh, just stepped up into it like just oh, yeah. Mike Myers breathing from the back, and then you stand up and yeah. Uh, was uh, a Shaw Me Unholy, the old Don't school know. rapper from New York. Well, the only thing Detroit, that Detroit rather Detroit. The, yeah. the, the only thing that that didn't go good that night was when we did our sound checks earlier that day. The sound man had uh, this light that was going to mimic lightning. Yeah, for us, and he had it all programmed to hit on certain parts of the song, but another group came in to do their sound check, and the other sound engineer erased all that and, and never got to. He never saved the presets, so oh, when we did our show, no. uh, we didn't have that. That, that was that was uh, implemented, so we were like, "Damn, that sucks." Oh no. Yeah. That's a rough time. I'll be in lives, and sometimes shit goes wrong, and you're like, "Fucking wing it! How do I do?" Like that's yeah. rough. It was a blast. You lip sync. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then in the green room, we had our own personal waitress, a bartender. Oh. So it was all you can drink. Uh, everything was free. We're like, damn. We oh, got royalty. That happened to me once in my band. We opened up. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Mushroom Head. Funny name, I know. It's familiar, but I can't. They're like Slipknot. They wear masks. It's like nine members. They're from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. They're kind of underground, but they came with a group called Il Nino, which is a Brazilian metal band that do christian is a big spanish dude with long dreadlocks oh, okay. um, and they came to club texas and we we ended up opening up and we had a little badge and a little wrestling uh wrestling yeah. we had a little room and we had a little like a free beer and we went on stage and there's like 400 people there and i'm like we're calling the herd go fuck yourselves <laughs> i couldn't believe it i was like Woo! like i had my sheet mask on from the white family the white one and i have that check it out i still got this this is a real sh fucking bull skull and all the bands signed it Oh, that's badass. Uh, let me see. There you go. There's the eye. Oh, that's, wow. Yeah, yeah. All the band signed. This is horns where they used to be. Uh, my mom signed it. She's passed away now, but I got all underneath signed. This is my good luck charm, man. I put it in my house and no one fucking breaks it. <laughs> but it's got, it's got memories with me, like I say. Um, you know, um, which is a big part of life. And I think music, which is really, I think we get along with too, not just wrestling, but music. Obviously it's rap, which I dig. I used to fucking freestyle rap. We played disc golf in Maine. I used to fucking battle rap and shit. Uh, and uh, I love all that. I love all that shit, but, but metal and stuff helps me kind of just the screaming takes away my aggression. And I just, I, whether it's like you said, whether it's country rap, even jazz, dude, if you dig music, it's your life. Like, I can't go a fucking day without listening to the tunes. I don't care if it's fucking right. Ryan Carey or fucking Beastie Boys or fucking Slayer. I got to play something. I need music. I can't just listen to podcasts or fucking <laughs> movies. I need to listen to tunes. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I digress. But, yeah, musicians, man. Once a musician, always one. Am I right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You guys still write? Uh, <laughs> here and there. I actually have uh, here and there. My, my cousin-in-law, we've been in here recording a little bit, just playing around, but Actually, I was like, yo, these tracks are pretty sick, man. So we might just uh, go purchase a beat and finish them. Oh, you know, I'd love to hear it. Send me some shit, man. I, yeah. I love 
I, I yeah, like you say, back in the day, it was like I'm only metal or I'm only rap. But nowadays, dude, I listen to fucking some Willie Nelson. I go, that's actually not bad. <laughs> I'm like, the last train to Clarksville, you know, <laughs> whatever the fuck, right? There's room for everything. Uh-huh. Hey, have you heard of Lucas Nelson? I think it's his son. He has this one song called Find Yourself. That one's actually pretty sick. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, we've stolen an hour and a half of these two fucking guys' uh, time. I'm sure they're fucking, <laughs> their wives are pissed. Um, so anyway, so we got Playboy. We got Rudy, a.k.a. Um, um, Sir, Sir Rev. Rev. Yes. And uh, Playboy, Play a B. And they're the Apocalypse Project podcast. Check them out on YouTube, on Facebook. Center in front request. If you're not an asshole, yes. they may accept it. And, uh, they're into wrestling. They're into everything from everything. Life's too short. So, Life is short. oh, what the fuck is this? Oh, that's the uh, performance that I was telling you about. Oh, for- I didn't know you could do that. So I that's do that. oh, so that's so that's so that's, uh, that's our our uh, the, the so yeah. This is uh, this is actually on our uh, ch- our channel. Oh, and- dope. So this is oh, a video. snap the fucking fog machine, yo. It's <laughs> the clown dog. Oh shit, it's Pennywise. <laughs> so yeah, that's the video we played at the bottom. And you can see it in the back of the screen. Oh, wait, is he sharing it? Oh, yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. So it's over there. You can see it there. And then uh so then when we let me get to where we come in, I mean, you can't really hear anything, but so that's, that's us nice. back there in the background, and then we slowly creep forward, and then yeah, eventually there's there's Rev right there's, there. There's, there's, oh there. dude. Look at you feeling it. Sometimes you look and you're like, boy, was I silly or why did I do that? But you just feel it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Oh, oh yeah. I love yeah. that. Look at yeah. you go, <laughs> Rex. <laughs> so, yo, check it out, man. Keep it out. I wish I could hear it. You can't play oh, power. Really? Can't... Let, me see. let me see if I can. Let me let me see if I can get yeah, this. Oh, uh, maybe it's not going to go through that. I don't know if you can hear it or not. I can hear it. That's me. That's me. I think that's the only thing. 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 That's I'm dying to live. That's me right there. Die. Giving a fuck and still I ride. Rev and Jake, family. Death to life, the faculty. Give me the mic and I'm bound to be that motherfucker. That y'all can't see but wish to be because I'm truly free. Fuck the game, y'all ain't street. Play B, man, he brought him right. Never too tough, I don't say too much. When the boys roll up, my mouth is shut. It's funny to me how to claim to be, but they none of me. It shows them fewer than here with me. Death to life, let it be known. Play B protection where I hang my hat and I call my home. Well, respect in the land I roam. Never Gonna quit. Way too strong. Been at it for way too long. Look yeah, at memories. me, bro. Memories. Yeah. 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 Oh shit! Thank you for sharing, guys. Check that out. Yeah. Yes, um, Heather saying hi to Betsy. Hello, ladies. Hello. Glad you're tuning in a little late. We gotta go. These fucking cats. Um, yeah. Check them out, man. Play B. Uh, like I said, that's his own channel too. And I'm sure you can find a link somewhere through the Apocalypse Project. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure, yeah. Message- podcast slap fucking gangster rappers, motherfuckers. I'm proud to know these guys. <laughs> you guys are talented. I-, I thought, you know, when you guys said it, of course, you just think, okay, well, all right. But then you see that shit, your stage, your background, that's legit shit. As oh, a musician man. to another musician, to two musicians. Yeah, yeah. right on. Seriously, dude. I yeah. listen to more of that shit all day. You guys are talented. Yeah, man. Check it out. There's a couple tracks in there. I mean, they're all underground, recorded independently, but I mean... You know, at the time they sounded badass for for what they were. Now you got like you know you get better. Yeah, yeah. Better. <laughs> really, seriously though, you guys got some good sounding, some good editing. Uh, get the beat coming through a little bit. Get the bass coming through. That's a fucking sick track. There's Take some good up. rhymes in there, and there's some good lyrics, and I think that's killer. It's well, hard. I get it. Like me, like I said, you know, being a little shitty rock band, you sound like a fucking. You listen to yourself, and you're like, yeah, I'm like fucking Leonard Skinner, Pantera. Then you hear it, you're like, oh, I sound like Green Day. What the fuck? <laughs> but, I mean, it's. Yeah. it's you know, it's all about having a good time. Fuck yeah, it, right? Right. yeah, you gotta have fun. Um, so, Playboy B, um, the Rev, uh, um, Adam, the historian ghost hunter. Um, the guys, say goodbye. We're gonna end it, hey, and uh, we'll have the hard copy up tomorrow. Thank you for joining me, right man. On. Thank you. Um, and hang out there. I'm gonna end the broadcast. We can talk for a minute. I'm just cool. gonna shut it off. So, thank you guys for watching in the audience. Thank you, historians. Get out, explore. Um, listen to cool shit. When you're out exploring, listen to the Apocalypse Project. And, uh, and, and throw on uh, my YouTube thing. Do some exploring. Listen to some good shit. 
and uh, support some some people that need it, that deserve it. We know our shit. We have fun doing it. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you in a couple weeks, maybe next week on my birthday. We out.